Hello, everyone, and welcome back to yet another <laughs> fabulous Tuesday. Today we're playing, of course, Flesh and Blood TCG, short fab for short. And uh, this will be, this is fun. We've been doing, we started, if, you, if you've been missing it, Flesh and Blood is a TCG from a company called Legend Story Studios out of New Zealand. Um, it's very, uh, it's so good. Uh, that's kind of art house, isn't it? I mean, is that too, is that too absurd to say? But the, the quality of the, everything that they're doing, the art style, um, it's really impressive. You know when you find a new, uh, you, you will answer yes to this. Kind no, of I've never experienced this. You know when you find a new <laughs> artist and you're, you're hitting their music and then you just track after track, you're just like, yeah. Yeah. They get it. That's how I feel with Flesh yeah. and Blood. So it's a it's a trading card it's game. Like Casey Musgrave. Uh, it means it's collectible. Yeah, it's exactly it. You listen to Casey. It's like every album I got to. I was, yeah, like, I was like, oh yeah, oh, we're getting close to enlightenment here. Uh, and it's just a it's super it's super cool. They have this whole universe they fleshed out, and it's uh, you choose a character that starts the game. They have their own weapon they start the game with, and they have their armor. They start the helmet and a chest piece and arm piece and. Boots. And apparently we're getting and, a lot more of that stuff in Crucible. And this third set is supposed to come out now. The just... idea, man, the idea of like having one hero that you could build maybe three or four different ways just based on the gear that you bring. Tell them, tell, say no more. <laughs> say no more. Say no more. Uh, and it's super, It's we've been talking on the podcast. Uh, if you if you don't aren't, aren't familiar with that, it's called the Covenant Cast. We do it weekly. But what are you thinking? The series that we've been doing on the podcast, many series of sorts, is called How to Ruin a Game. And this game is getting so many of those beats right. It's it's undeniable. Ultimately. Not like not the correct way to run a game, but the opposite of it. Yeah, like, like they're the, they're like hitting the right beats, not the wrong beats. That's if, right. if you catch my meaning. So uh, we started out. We did a bunch of videos. We did like a t introductory use the starter decks uh, video up front. That was one of the first streams, to, probably like three or four weeks ago. And then we did a couple weeks where we were doing sealed of the first set, sealed of the second set. That was super fun. And then we switched to the blitz format. So this is kind of like somewhere between sealed and full on constructed at the like the level of building that you're having to do. I love it. Yeah, and we've done that so far for four different heroes, and there's only eight total in the game as of after set number two. So today what we're going to be doing is looking at at least one more hero each, putting decks together. I assume we'll put those decks together a lot faster than we've been doing with the first couple because you're just bold, getting your, uh, you know, spreading your wings, figuring that out. I had some out. ideas to fix that Dorinthia deck, too. Had some well, maybe really we have ideas. to fix that deck at some point today. We probably should. Uh, so we'll be doing that, and we'll be exploring the constructed format. So if you're familiar with the game, obviously welcome. You'll, I think this is, you're in the right place. And if you're new to the game and you have any questions, please leave them in chat. Chat itself uh, is always great on these streams that we've been doing. They're super helpful, but also we try to catch as many of this as we can to kind of slow down enough to explain it to people that might not be as familiar. And on that note, I want to mention on our website, if uh, the word TCG makes you a little nervous and you don't want to check it out, we have Ira starter decks on the website for free. They may be out of stock right now. If they are... I got news for you, Zach. Everything is back in stock, according to chat. Unless Evan is, uh, unless Evan is fooling us. No, it seems, like, it seems like we have multiple reports now that all those products are back in. Literally right next door. Uh, we just weren't uh, as familiar that that was going to happen. So, wow. Uh, but the the problem with this is that the the supply of this game has evaporated. Uh, am I supposed to say that out loud? I don't know. It's gone. All we I know mean, is the si signals we're getting are that they're gone. It's just like, well, it, we can't get more boxes. Um, so this won't necessarily be the I mean, end I of the... I might need to take a second and go <laughs> order a bundle. <laughs> this, uh, this is a small batch of bundles that's going back in right now, uh, assuming that that is actually happening. And then uh, once those are gone, it looks like it's going to be a little while before boxes can come back in stock. But apparently there's a reprint in the works from what I hear. Yeah, I've heard that there's a reprint in the but works. But that means now, because like the boxes we have, I have two left in there and I have these packs. On the on the first you set, take those boxes away from the no, room. No, I just don't have them cl clear. You, just, you hug them at night. You want me to store all my, my precious my stuff that we use for the stream in, in here? <laughs> well, uh, golem treat. This room would get things. real full all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, but my precious maybe has been mentioned once or twice. No, I'm just kidding. But on the box, it says on the first set alpha, and on the uh, arcane rising, it says first edition, mm -hmm. which I assume is kind of the. Same thing, Alpha being the first set and the first edition being the first print of any set. Same card, uh, right? Yeah, same quality, yeah, yeah, same card. Yeah. That's one thing I really like. It's and I, I, I don't thing, know the I details. I just assume this is what's happening. Yeah, uh, you know what they say about assumptions. Got me this far. Always good. <laughs> oh, no, wrong, wrong <laughs> one. Uh, but pres presumably they would be the same set. They're just first edition is limited. It's printed once. And then every card after that that's printed from that uh, set is going to be the unlimited version. You saw this with like Star Wars CCG. The black border is the limited first edition. The white border on the, that oh. set is like unlimited, so you can always tell. Uh, Middle Earth CCG did this where they had black borders on the limited and dark blue on the unlimited. Do you think they're going to do the same thing? I don't know how they're going to do it. Think the cards will look different? Hmm. 
Because, I mean, otherwise, it's immaterial, right? It's what's, the same cards. Huh? Well, what's weird about it is, like, and so... And collectors be collectors, On the collector right? side of things, like Magic uh, first edition stuff, right? Or Pokemon first edition, right? First edition Charizard versus non-first edition Charizard. I have a non-first edition Charizard, and it's probably a couple hundred bucks value. First edition is, like, 10, 20 grand. Really? Is the difference. Just because it has the little thing on it. Yeah, the first because edition. there's only, you know, like, mm. 1,500 first edition, whatever the number is, a first edition Charizard. So same with, like, Fandel's, uh Tunic. It's like there's a, a finite amount of those first edition versions of That's that. That's interesting. Cool. Uh, but again, yeah, it's, right. it's, I, it kind of plays to their whole rarity. And this is what a collectible game has to do to be collectible, which is uh, it... Obviously, if you have a non-first edition, it was like Base 2 came out for Pokemon as well. So they had first edition, non-first edition of the base set. Mm -hmm. Then they literally put out Base 2, which was an amalgamation of a couple sets. And kind of like what Spoils did when they yeah, had second their, edition. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so they gave you a lot of ways to get the cards so that they weren't like insane from a competitive standpoint, especially if they're not planning on rotating. Yeah. Like it, it allows players to actually get access to these cards. But it also gives the collectors something to be super excited and interested about. And it gives early adopters, right? Uh, they had, a, I mean, for a long time, that product just available. Right. Uh, same with Pokemon. Like, right. there was a minute where you could just get it, and then once it's gone, like, well. well it seems that we've approached that point, uh, which I think is a good sign, right? I mean, that, that means the product's selling. That means that distribution can't keep up. It means that boxes are moving, which means that players are getting product, which presumably means that players are playing, which presumably means that the game will continue to uh, be played and be successful. That's right? the goal. Collectible games have never failed before. Not once, not never. Not, especially not after a first uh, couple of sets. All right, so. That's um, it. So if we have the Iro deck and you want to check the game out, grab two of those. It's free. You pay shipping. You get the decks. You can try it. We also have the bundle of four starters the, from the first set. Those are incredible decks that will let you try out the game without having to do deck building or collecting or any of that kind of stuff. And then uh, check out the sealed videos. I think that was that was super fun, and I think anybody can super do that fun. as long as you can get your hands on some boxes. Shout out to folks in the chat saying that they're buying those bundles. So Chris, I, I've seen you your name around. I'm glad you got in on the the bundles. You placed a four bundle order. That's the big the big big I mean, dad. You're, you're, <laughs> you're only uh, what uh, two percent or five percent of the way. I, I forget what I said to me driving those out to your uh, your place of residence. I mean, you got to be careful with those claims because, like, I was looking at. So we also another thing that we do for the games that we support. We typically is we offer a subscription service, so you can sign up to automatically receive booster boxes in the future. You don't get charged till a week or two before they come out. We got the scar for scars in. They're, They're right, right here, here on the table. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm I'm excited to do that. But what I wanted to say is like I was looking at how many subscriptions to get for Crucible War, which is the next set that's coming out. And I was like, okay, well, just, I'm doing the math on the number of rares. It's and three boxes. And stuff. The answer for me was yeah, three boxes. Marketing made it that way, um, Zach. Because I was like, ah, okay, at least one, of course. But then I was like, what about two? And I was doing the math on how many rares I would get. And I was like, well, if I'm at two, a third gets me a third scar for a scar. The but play set of the promo and free shipping. And free now, shipping. free shipping doesn't matter to you, obviously, because it's literally going it, like It gets 10 free, meters. Sh freely shipped to my desk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the thing is, like, you know, I think it's pretty reasonable. It depends on how far you want to go, right? But if I was just playing Blitz, I easily think you, you get away with two bo down to two boxes mm -hmm. if you want. Uh, but we're, we have two people playing. Uh, so and you are we're supporting playing my habit. So yes, I'm basically you. supporting your habit. Thank yeah. you. Uh, but Take it out of the paycheck. It's huh? also just just like the uh, how many of everything you're going to get. Um, you know, I think the right number is like three to four. Like four is a case. And a lot of people like buying by the case so that you, if there are any weird like one legendary per case or whatever it is, mm -hmm. it, it's not, that's not how that works. But <laughs> if it were, like in Destiny, that's how it was. Every box came with uh, six legendaries. And I, I think this is a more true collectible experience, which is like sometimes random must be random. Yeah. Someone was saying they bought two bundles from us, and they got three legendaries out of four boxes, which is crazy because we've opened three, almost three, no, we're two and a half boxes in of each set. None. But we weighed them, and we sent the good ones to the customers. As you should. As you should. I mean, it's just as, the right thing to do. That's the ethical thing to do as a business, I think. Uh, we're also uh, worth noting... Um, Zach and I are in the throes of uh, just life, real life, you know, um, houses and those kinds of things. Everything going on. Uh, I'm I'm trying to run electric lines out to the property that I'm currently uh, planning to build on. Out, uh, Jonathan, my brother, bought some land, and and I'm trying to build. I bought I got the deed today. It's in my truck the right official. now. You're a I land got, owning I have Oklahoma acres, American. Eleven acres in my hands in Bristol, Oklahoma. But now I've got to get electric a half mile to it. Mm. 
That's the real struggle, eh? It turns out that is the real struggle, Zach. Thank you I, for uh, uh, mentioning. I I got to learn how many acres I'm on. It's a very, you know what? Here's my thing on the land. It's great. It's total, totally different strategies, right? Doesn't matter what acres you're on. You plug into the grid and you go on with your no, life. No, it's already plugged in. See, this, there's a difference between... Right? Dump your sewer I, in the, in I the wanted, line and be done with it. Honestly, it's so reflective of our deck building styles and our yeah. play styles. So it was literally like, I wanted to jump in there fast. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to have to deal with all that stuff. I just want to play the game, so to speak. Yeah. Whereas, like, you literally are like, I want to do this like no one else does it. Yeah. Uh, and I want to try to do it the best way possible. And it's very smart. And I want to struggle. I want, seemingly. I want land. I want uh, energy efficiency. I want exactly what I want. I want it customized just, just perfectly. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. The things that it would be like deck building, except halfway through the process, somebody comes in and tells you that three of the cards that you want to use are illegal. And then they take your deck and throw it against the wall. That's how you feel right now? That's essentially what this process has been like, <laughs> yes. Because, I come to find out, uh, if you're trying to do a, uh, a septic tank, conventional septic tank, because obviously it's got to go somewhere, uh, I can't be within a half mile of a named creek, which I am. That's why I'm there, because there's water. Uh, and so I may have to do an aerobic septic system, which is like an extra two to three grand, and there's a lot of maintenance involved and whatnot. So just, you know, be glad for the conveniences of modern life from time to time, because this is awful. I appreciate it. I'm a, I think I'm a city cat I'll by just nature. Come, can I just stay at your house for a year while I figure this out? Hey, by the way, apparently the boxes sold out in 18 Well, that's minutes. what I said. I said it was like, this is the last uh, run of boxes. Now, we, we will have more of those promos available. <laughs> that's insane. I mean, it's insane. I don't know what to say. It's <laughs> but um, we, we expect more boxes to be in at some point. So the promo deal probably is going to be available at some point later. There's still a few more of those that we, we can offer. Um, but it could be months pl month plus. I don't know when the, when the boxes are coming back in. But what that means is it's not ideal for us because we would like to continue selling these to all of you fine people. But it does mean well, that everyone else around the world is catching on, and so they're moving through outlets that aren't just us. And this is a classic. Um, this week's episode of the podcast, I think we've been doing the how to how to run a game, and I think it's going to be on like production, mm -hmm. uh, because this very issue is something that we've seen wreck so many games, mm -hmm. uh, which is and it's a little different because obviously actually they kind of get better sometimes. So <laughs> that's where. So like the problem is if you're watching this right now, which I think a lot of people watching uh, our flesh and blood. Content, I gotta take care of yeah, some computer stuff. Our flesh and blood content at the moment are new to the game being introduced to it and so if you jump in and it's and you're new and you can't get a hold of anything um, then that means that you can't really dive into the game right so you really don't want to ever be out of product uh, but if you're gonna ha lean one way or another what you what's way worse is having way too much product uh, because that's that's got a lot of other problems associated with it uh, but it's kind of a bummer I, I I'm not sure exactly on the timeline of reprints and whatnot but hopefully they have that soon. Uh, and hopefully also we're not running out of the starters and stuff so people can at least try it and, and dive into that kind of thing. But um, it's, a, it's a real problem managing supply, how much to print, because it's super costly to way over print. And then, of course, people can't be excited and get into a game if you can't buy it. Um, so it's tough. Ben Sweeney saying, I want to hear about the big surprise you talked about in the last episode of the podcast. Well, you're going to have to wait a little bit Hadn't longer. Haven't yet. Uh, I... <laughs> Oh, these names. I am the nut says, hey, Team Covenant, you guys brought my attention to the Star Wars LCG. It looks so interesting, so I ordered the whole game in expansions, and I don't want to miss it. Thank you. That's awesome. It's great. I had a great time it's with that It's truly great. Now, I will tell you, guys, before we, uh, I will have to take a phone call, likely, uh, that comes up, because I'm getting a pasture mode right now. And that's a whole thing, too. Well, um, you let me know if you need to bounce. Uh, Franco asking, can he buy from uh, us via PayPal? I don't think that's a payment option that's available, right? Check this out. That is not available. PayPal is not available. We process through Stripe, though. It's it's as safe or safer than PayPal. Well, I think a lot of people have money in PayPal. Yeah, and they don't have a way to. That's to a whole use thing. It. Yeah. No, we don't. We don't have. Look at the. Can you believe yeah, that this card exists? This. What? It's full. The full art. It's just. It's fantastic. Can we pull it up? The scar for a scar. Uh, I don't know. We're still getting our, our text sorted going? over there. Uh, so I just want to say, one, this card's awesome. It looks fantastic, and shout out to Legend Story for working with us to be able to, to provide this. Yeah, it's amazing. The way it works is we're going to be sending one of these with every box through our subscription service. So if you're unfamiliar with that, head over to the website, sign up again, uh, and you don't get charged until about two weeks before it comes out. So that'll be later this month. It is That's going to happen soon. So if you want to get these promos, this is the way to get them, and that's, that's going to be the only way to get them. So... 
uh, hop on the subscription, automatically get the stuff, and then get the uh, gorgeous scar for a scar. It's crazy. This rainbow foiling, especially with that like sky behind her. Oh, I know. It's everything we could have ever wanted, man. It really is. Honestly. Yeah, it did themselves. It's really amazing. All right, Zach. Well, let's uh, let's get kicking, shall we? You can play some. Is anybody out there? Do you guys? Anybody out there feel like they're good at flesh and blood yet? Can I get a show of hands from the room? I don't feel like I'm any good. Do you feel like you're good at this game? Uh, no. Good. I feel like I, I can that. play the game and mostly get the rules right. You can operate the game. Yeah, we can operate the game. I'm at, at that level. Point. I can, can move the crane around, the but I'm not picking anything up. I'm at the level where I can be disappointed in everything that I'm doing. Basically, it's like every time I finish a turn, I'm like, ah, and that basically has been happening since the beginning. So I'm waiting for the time whenever I'm like, ah, I had one good turn with Azalea last last time. You you basically, I feel like you saw through. I saw a moment, but there was I'm a glimpse down. of the matrix. We've been playing the cooperative games. Yeah. So I'm putting this in the wrong spots. I'm putting this over so I Let's can start. Let's put them in our deck. I'm gonna start doing this. Okay. I'm gonna start deck building. Don't touch them too much. Can we get a sleeve on these Everyone's things? Everyone's saying no. They feel awful at this game. Good, yeah. Like a bunch crazy? of people are saying no. Isn't that funny? Best deck building experience I've ever partaken in, says David Williford on uh, Facebook. Chris saying, not even remotely, much harder to judge intelligent plays in this system. Isn't that the beauty of it, though? Isn't that kind of why we do it? Oh, there's the hey guy. Sorry, Zach. It's me. I'm going to decide what I'm building while you're hey, gone. Guys, man. Out of there. Uh, all right, so there are four heroes we haven't built for yet. It's Reinar, Dash... Viscerae and Katsu. Uh, and I basically want to know who you guys want to see me build. I think technically Steven and I had agreed that I was going to do Ryanar, he was going to do Katsu, and then I was going to do Dash and he was going to do Viscerae. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you guys pick. Who do you want me to build? This is for the old Blitz format. A lot of Dash is coming through. Dash? Oh no. I'm going to get dashed. Why, why do you guys want me to build Dash? What up, Slam Dunk? Saying he joined the live stream hoping we were pros. No, we're not. Uh, a lot of times we wouldn't show this part of the process, which is us learning how to play a game and get decent at it. Uh, but we are anything but pros at the moment. We're showing you a lot of the process this time. Showing you the process of our lives. That's just kind of the nature of it, isn't it? Tom McCall says, I'm pretty good at sleeving. <laughs> Who's playing who? All Who's right. playing what? I'm gonna I'm gonna take the hit because neither of us want to do it, and chat really wants me to do You're it. You're doing dash. Right? I'm yeah. dashing around. Yep. I'm Garbage. gonna do dash. Can right. I do Reinar? Is that okay? You you snipe you got me ex excited about Reinar, and then you snipe him. All right, I'll do I'll do Viserae. 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 That's a good good cocktail. That's probably one of my tops. Um, right I'll do yeah. I'll do Ruin Ruin Blade. All right. Let me get the cards out. Of the tome. John the Bard, have fun any black gold? I don't know. We're about to dig the well uh, here probably this week. Um, you're, you're rune blading around? Yeah, I'll rune blade. This is for you. And we found out that everything that isn't rare has all three colors. Is that right? Yes. Our so all the commons that, right? have red, blue, yellow. Right. But then the rares, super rares, majestics have a color. Okay. The rares actually can have three colors. But the super rares and majestics, everything above rare, I think only has one only color. Only one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's look at, um, let's do a little, let's do a little brainstorming session. Are you ready? Yep. You played uh, Viscerae one, one time before. Vukure. <laughs> one time before. Um, what did you learn? So... Four hand size, standard, 20 health hand size. Obviously, the key is whenever you play a Ruin Blade card, if you've played another non-attack action card this turn, create a Ruin Chant token. So here's what I learned. So basically, play a non-attack and then play as many Ruin Blade cards as you can, right? That's how that works? Is that your weapon is as important as your character. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Nebula Blade here is once per turn action, you spend two and you attack, and it's a one. Uh, and if it hits, you create a Rune Blade token. Okay, very nice. That's a solid weapon. If you've played a non-attack action card, uh, it gets plus three. Oh my gosh. So the non-attack actions, particularly that boost an attack, um, but you're basically looking at what are cards you can play that have go again. Yes, non-attack actions that have go again. That yeah. allow you to get a plus three, because if you can hit with this, you're also getting the Rune Blades, or the yeah. Rune so Tokens. Th that, that seems to make sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Also, it seems, oh, items only have one color also. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so can we just take a second? Can we look at, um, you have the tokens, the different weapons. You've got them all here. Yep. So I'm trying to figure out, right? So with uh, Bravo and Azalea, it seems pretty straightforward that the idea is that you need to use Dominate to get damage through. Because we already talked about the fact that you could pitch your whole hand on defense most of the time and prevent everything your opponent's trying to do in terms of damage. So given that that's the dynamic, if I'm spending four cards to try to do damage to you and you can ditch four cards basically to prevent all of that damage, then we're just going to stalemate forever. So we have to have things that are greater than the sum of their parts to make damage happen. Totally. And that's typically dominate which we see on uh, Bravo and Azalea. Mm -hmm. And then uh, things like Katsu, which is small pockets of a ton of different damage yep. sources, right? We also saw on... Uh... Intimidate. We also saw Intimidate on Reinar. Oh, where they get rid of their cards from their hand. So like they go to the Banish pile or yeah. whatever temporarily, and then they can't block with their whole hand. So what I want to know... Who was I playing last? Oh, the wizard. wizard. So the wizard just has arcane. unblockable damage. It's Arcane, <laughs> damage. yeah. Now, you can technically, so you can't pitch your whole hand. It's basically kind of like Dominate, because once you get to a certain threshold, yeah. there's no conceivable way. Once like, you're past Arcane Barrier... If you have Arcane Barrier 2 or 3, it's like, yeah, you can pay 3, but if I can do 4, I know I can do damage. You can at least do a damage, yeah. right. So then we got to look at... I want to look at what the other heroes are bringing um, in that context, right? So Viscerate is doing a little bit of both, it seems like. It seems like the idea is basically the Katsu of Arcane Damage. Little pockets of a one arcane of damage here and there. Now, now, let me grab one of those rune tokens for do you. Do they pop whenever you attack every time? And is it a separate source of damage, or is it lumped in with the They're attack each itself? separate sources okay. of damage. That's what makes them crazy. So that's worthwhile. Uh, rune chant is an aura that stays in the arena until it's destroyed. When you play an attack action card or attack with a weapon, destroy a rune chant token, and destroy a rune chant and deal one arcane damage to target opposing hero. Okay. So this would be individual instances that would stack up on the on the chain, basically. Yeah. So basically, if you obviously if you have a bunch of these on the same turn, your opponent is really not going to be able to block very many of them. Yeah. Uh, because it's in each instance of a damage, right? Now, the idea then. Okay. 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 So then the idea would be. The more of these you can trigger at the same time, the less likely that would be blocked because Arcane Barrier 1 with a four card hand is unlikely. If you have like 20 rune chants popping at once, that's well, tremendous. It's, it's not, is it Arcane Damage? It's not Arcane Damage. Yeah, it is. Arcane yeah, it is damage. Arcane Damage. Yeah, yeah so it's even thing. better. Yeah, so the problem here is that like if you just play a standard game, you're going to get one Arcane Damage when you go and do your normal attacks. But Viscerate has this ability where you could just play non-attack action cards and then uh, Ruin Blade cards. As long as you don't attack, and as long as you don't do an action card that's an attack, then those Ruin Chant tokens will continue to stack. Yeah, so that's where he's going to be really good with the healing cards, mm. with the defensive card, like the one that... It's like all of those cards, the auras, the potions, he's literally just like... Hanging out. So maybe we just try to stack up rune chant tokens without all of them disappearing, and then one attack, and they all I, happen. I at think once. that's the vibe. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and that also means, though, like interestingly, he's probably going to have less health mm -hmm. for most of the game. So it could be that he does like two attacks in a game, two bigger, bigger rune chant attacks. So you're going downtown mode. You're going serious strategy on this, like well, dropping I, bombs. I think there's literally the like, I don't ever attack until I'm winning the game moment. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest version. Yeah. There's also the version that's like, okay, when I could do 12 damage and you're, you know, I'm, let's say you have a 20 health game. Mm -hmm. I'm down to 10 health. It's like, if you have the chance to do eight, it's like you could sneak eight and still be behind. And if you're behind, you get act like a lot of cards trigger off of yeah, being scar, behind. Yeah, scar, scar, life, life, um, that kind of stuff. Or you can just totally ignore it, and it's all defense, healing, and you just wait, and literally you don't do anything until you're doing 20 plus damage. You could also potentially run it wide, right? So this is a concept too, where if you did, let's say you did an attack that did one rune chant token and so you have to block with one and then you have to pitch a resource to to get rid of an arcane barrier one 
and then I do a Rune Blade card that generates another Rune Chant token, and then I play another attack, like small, these small attacks that are doing one instance of, of arcane damage along the way. And that could be really annoying, because then maybe you have six to seven sources of damage in a single four card turn, mm -hmm. and you really can only pitch four cards to deal with them. So like two or three is probably sneaking through, because um, you don't want to waste your defense card on paying for the one. So there may be a wide way to build this too, like more of like that Katsu style hit it. So we need to just look at the Rune Blade cards. That's basically what needs to happen. And honestly, if we look at these weapons over here, what are all these cards? Why are these all sleeved up like this? Those are the cold foil weapons, and then those were the full characters. All the characters? From early on. And then here's but some boots. We were like, using those in a draft or something. Oh, OK. Um, now, Arcane Barrier, just to confirm, it can only, technically, if these are all different instances of damage, it could block as long as they have the resources That's to correct. pay for it. Yeah, as long as they've got the resources. 100% right. But then you could do that weird thing where you like get them to pitch a three resource thing, and then it's like, oh, I'll just start stacking them now and not attack because you've got two floating in your pool, and I don't want to, you know, waste yeah. my arcane barrier. We'll have to stuff see the card pool because it's like if you have attacks worth making, you have to ask like, is it really worth foregoing a bunch of attacks just to wait with the tokens? Yeah. Versus like, good question. Just like, because then the other thing would be if you're not attacking, their offense is getting extremely good, right? Because they're not having to waste any cards blocking attacks. Yeah. So now they're bringing their big dad dominate. So you kind of need to be doing something. Stuff. Huh. Yeah. Now, worth saying, on these cards, uh, they are not sorted. So we're about to go through that process. I just realized that. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you mean you're going to go through it and I'm going to talk to chat? Mm. I'm going <laughs> to go through with my card. Do you know what I mean? Well, let's zoom out. Let's liber have, oh, let's libertarianism talk is to the all right, let's see what you guys are saying about, um, about Rune Blade. Run and Slogism seems to be a common thing. Um, build up bit, Nathan says, uh, build up big pockets of tokens before you attack. Maybe taking turns without attacking to build more. Yeah. It's not optional, that's correct, to pop those tokens. Um, uh, Squirrel Bane asking, what was the name of that cocktail? Called a Vukare, V I E U X C A R R E. Classic, Nolan's cocktail, one of the best. Benedictine, uh, you know, rye, etc. Etc. I've had a lot of them, never made them. Hey, take a slam dunk, Cosmos. That's awesome. Uh, Sub to catch the rest of this later. Have fun, guys. Fantastic. Cheers. Absolutely. So David giving us the attack setup, attack setup, repeat kind of feel. That's that's what I was doing when we were playing the draft version, because like. Obviously, I don't think you can necessarily just play the in draft. You're playing with what you've got. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it seemed like there were some a fair number of attacks in there that you actually wanted to be making, mm -hmm. and so you would just kind of get damage where and when you could. And it's a good good thing here for from Daniel. Basically, if building tall is viable, it sounds like it would not be very interactive. So this would be basically you're just not attacking the whole game, building up these tokens. That does sound boring. Uh, but the counter would be just your offense should be on fire, right? You should be able to dominate if somebody's not attacking you. I mean, Should I would be. think that's the case, unless your deck isn't doing anything. Well, don't, don't talk to me about that. I'm all too familiar with that concept. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Chris Angel? Good to see you as well. Uh, Van, has anyone from LSS ever joined this stream? Not really, but uh, yeah, I see Ian on Facebook. He was the uh, brand manager for a bit, if I'm not mistaken there, Ian. You can pop in here if you'd like. Jordan Hightower saying, just got the uh, Hero Starter decks. Haven't been this excited for a competitive game since Netrunner. That is high praise. Well, it's a good game. I got to tell you, it's, I'm, I'm feeling a little I'm feeling a little excitement myself. <laughs> uh, same thing with Brennan here saying, just got my Ira decks. It's awesome that you provide a cheap resource to try out this game. You guys wouldn't believe how many of those we have sent out to the world. I'm not even going to say the number. It's it's bigger than a bread box, though. <laughs> you could not fit the number of decks we've sent in a bread box. That is accurate. I'd say it's greater than it's bigger than three hundred and lower than ten thousand. How coy! <laughs> I don't even know if that's the right word. I mean, how awesome is it though that all these people get? No, to it's fantastic. And Legend Story a lot like helped make that happen, right? So Reed definitely helped. Like, obviously, they have to give us the decks. So it's like, hey, we want to send these to people for free to get the game in people's hands. 
And they were like, that's great because uh, a lot of retail stores are closed and these were designed to demo in store and because they're closed, they're not doing anything for us. And so we're like, well, we'll handle the shipping. And they're like, well, we'll ship them to you. And then yeah. Cause with, you baby know, was made. With a baby? There we go. And That's, we fell home. And now the birds and bees story has been told. <laughs> um, now, you know, I, I know it, it's a lot to get into a game, especially when you can't try it in person. When you have a, like, when you have a local store open, it's nice because a lot of times you have people who are into the game playing it. But the ability to try a game before you actually buy in is so helpful, especially, especially when we're talking about a collectible game. That's just a big investment to make. Truth Teller Florian pulled a Fiendel's Spring Tunic from the uh, second Welcome to Wraith box. I will say, I don't even have a deck that I have in mind, but I want that card from a collectability standpoint. Also, in the lore. You've got it in your eyes. I can see it. Everything about Fiendel, Fandel, however you say it. Fiendel, Fiendel, Fiendel. Is that, everything about Arya, the, the, that section of the universe is just like fantastic. You guys see that old uh, SNL skit with Christopher Walken and Jimmy Fallon? And uh, they're singing that You Say Tomato, I Say Tomato song. I have seen that. My gosh, is that funny. That's a classic OG It's absolutely humor. classic. Yeah. And Walken's like, you say tomato, I say tomato. And then Jimmy's like, no, no, no. It's supposed to be, I think, tomato, tomato. And then he's like, Jimmy, I'm just reading it off the card. It's like the funniest thing. I absolutely <laughs> love it. What's up, Trez Million? Good to see you. Um, Blake asking, how do we feel about teaching the game? My friend was discouraged about falling behind when needing to defend all the time and not attacking. That's a good, I mean, that, I think it takes a little getting used to the kind of flow of it. You, what you probably need to do is you need to see those games where you're ahead and then you lose. Huh? I've seen a lot of those games. Um, or vice versa, <laughs> where you get behind and then you, and then you win. And I, I think just, so I can't wrap my mind around the, I'll just lay it on the table here. I can't wrap my mind around the, uh, the, the conceptual um, interplay of the game. What do you mean by that? Can you do that? So, like, how, as we said, each player has four cards. You can probably defend with all of them, barring things like Dominate or Intimidate, and prevent all damage. Or you can hold some of those cards to attack back. And the card numbers are pretty tight along a, you know, the three, four, five spectrum. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you approach the decision-making process of a turn as far as, am I going to defend this or not? To what degree am I going to defend it? And is my counterattack strong enough to warrant pushing right now or not pushing? I what mean, do, you guys got thoughts on that? We'll catch up with the chat. Let's see what Zach says of it, too. I think my baseline answer is I'm always kind of attempting to do the math as best as I can on by playing this as a defensive card, how much damage am I preventing versus how much damage do I think I will do? You start building your next turn before you block, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so that's where, like, once you get to the point where you're seeing that, because you start realizing if you have th four threes in your hand for defense, I mean, you can technically, unless they have dominate, you can block 12 damage. Uh, but, you know, let's say they're doing seven. And it's like, well, do you want to throw three threes into that to not take any damage? Right. Which uh, seems unreasonable. Yeah. And if you would take, let's say you throw one three and you take four, what is that going to allow you to do? Um, and, you know, the the variable there is that, like, I don't know how many defensive cards my opponent's going to play. So They don't either, right? Because they're going to redraw at absolutely. the end of the turn. Yeah. So, you know, if they have, um, you know, Sink Below in hand plus a three defense card that they want to play, or they let's say they put Sink Below into their, even better, into their arsenal, it's like they might be blocking for seven. You may do a seven back, and they just block it. So then you didn't prevent any damage, and you didn't do any damage. Right. That's a problem. Uh, which is a problem, but you did get two cards out of there, uh, one out of the arsenal, one out of their hand. Um, and so I, it's just a total tempo game. So I'm basically but looking... But can you catch back up if you lose that tempo? And how do you do it? Yeah, because like I've been down to one a lot. And then it's like literally, at that point, how you stacked your deck becomes very, very relevant. Uh, because what happens is like... Once I get down to like two, three, or four health, it's and like both players are pitching constantly to yeah. not die. And so now it's like, oh, you're doing seven. <laughs> I'm gonna block for seven. Yeah. And then you basically slow play it a little more, where it's like I'm getting a card down in my arsenal. If I can draw into my potions, or I can draw into something that like lasts, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll get that, that down. Extends past the turn. Yeah. And then I'll use the rest of my cards to block on their turn. 
And then I'm at that point, the, the thing about the tempo there is you only get a swing at that point every third or fourth turn. Yeah. And so your swings, that's I was playing Bravo is what I'm thinking about mostly. He has big swings. So and I had potions and I had stuff. So it was like the way I was playing the end game with him is I would basically take damage in order to be able to swing back with big swings. Um, and so what would happen is I would like go from 20 to 10 and I'm just setting up. And I, my next turn literally might be potion arsenal. Mm -hmm. And I, I took 10. Right, right, right. right. Um, all to basically set up the turn where I'm gonna be able to get you down to two or three damage. And then at two or three, Bravo's a problem. Yeah, because once you have the dominate, yeah. Because he's dominate on a stick. Yeah. So that's where like, I think just understanding what you're trying to set up, but you can't, uh, you just have to keep making trades that you think are gonna be in your favor. And also if your opponent can do seven, and you can deal seven back and they can block all your damage. If they can block seven and do seven every round, that's a really good deck. Right, like, right, right. I, and that's kind of the balance, right? Where it's like if you're hitting for eight or nine, they're either going to take damage or they're going to have a weaker offensive turn. Mm -hmm. And if they have a weaker offensive turn, that should give you a better offensive turn the next thing, and you've now turned the tempo around. And I think it's important that this is what, remember the difference between the first Azalea play that I had and then once we looked at what is my ideal line for this deck, like what is the string of car four cards that is most effective in mm -hmm. this? Yep. And then that next game, I actually pulled more or less that exact thing off, and it did like you know twelve damage or thirteen damage or something. There's also that piece of it too, where I think you have to start thinking about it as crafting. Like if you have, if there are four cards that work really well together, that this is kind of the the line that you've built your deck around, and let's say it's like a string of. You open with like life for a life or scar for a scar, and so you have to have less health than your opponent, but it has go again and it's an attack. And then it goes again, and then that allows you to play this thing, and then that effect is gonna buff this effect, and then by the end of it, you've done like 15 damage, right? Yeah. So at that point, you start blocking with cards that aren't those combo pieces, like that aren't those important cards, and maybe you hold the one, and then you get the new hand, and now you have two of the four pieces that you might need to kind of really uh, do that thing that you want to do. And so then maybe that's where I would consider like, well, so right now I can block with all three of these cards or I can hold the second card of my combo and in doing so, maybe I draw into the other two pieces on the next turn. Yeah. And then it's like, and then I'm going to put one in my arsenal to make sure that I have that as a kind of a safety blanket so I don't have to spend my combo cards blocking the next attack. And then eventually you get all four in your hand and then the magic happens and that's where you can kind of play that tempo game Try not to fall too far behind and then launch this big counterattack. And but I, you have to know those lines. I was going to say, I think that's that's super important, which is like knowing how your deck can create a disproportionate amount of damage. Yes. And and actually stick that damage and then playing to that. Because mm -hmm. a little two or three damage exchange is fine. But like if you're giving up a 10 damage swing so that you could do two or three last turn, like that's, you're seeing a different layer of the game. Yeah, I'm, I'm with it. Look at this, look at birthday cake here too. It's a birthday. Alright, right, let's zoom in then. Um, uh, let's see. So then the question becomes, oh, are you doing the rune chest stuff? Oh my gosh, it actually worked. It did work. I was like about to start sorting. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Sure, convenient. Wow. This is, uh, you should talk to Shannon about this. I feel like I, I do this a lot. You. I say something like jokingly, like I'm going to do something that's really annoying, and then as it turns out, the assumption is that it actually is going to be done, and then I get the benefit. You have a lot more of your M's and S's than I do. I don't like this. I don't talk about my M's and S's like, like that. M's and S's, <laughs> Majestics and Supers. <laughs> All right, Gojira. You, you heard it here first. What Next time I see you guys, I'm bringing Viserae. Viserae! You actually start seeing the like the lines in terms of like what kind of cards they're giving you. And yeah, how many, like how it's supposed to yeah. work. And we also have blitz decks that they have provided on their website that we could just build and know that it's at least high, like, mediocre. Like it's going to be above average. There's basically six commons. Okay. And then the rest are your rares. Oh, well, why wouldn't you do this? Supers and Majestic. So let's start with Read the Ruins. Zero cost, red, read the ruins. Create three tokens. Those are your fancy cards. Well, this is amazing. I think it's all red all the time on this one, right? Maybe all three? Wow. I mean, that's, that's three instances of one arcane damage.
just right there for zero. That's a fantastic card. It's a fantastic. Card. I run three of that. Fantastic. Card. Not even a question. And then of course it's yellow and blue because it's a common. Not I, pro I I can. It depends on how runey you're going, but I would probably run the yellows too. Zero for two. I'd consider the runes as well. The runes. The runes. runes. All right. So let's look at amplify the amplify the arc knight in red here. Uh, costs one resource less to play for each rune chant token you control, so it's probably going to be free. It's a three cost card. Six damage attack. <laughs> That's a big attack. For free, it's really good. It's incredible. <laughs> so this is the one you would probably launch your big Ruin Blade Assault with if you have a bunch of tokens stacked up. Six plus seven to ten instances of one arcane damage. Yeah, good luck. Is, yeah, good luck. And the story here is that you're basically enchanting your blade. Is that the idea? So it gets better and better and better, and then you swing. It's like fighting a boss in Zelda. All right, then drawn to the Dark Dimension Red. Creepy art. Again, costs you, one less for each run chant token you control. Draw a card. So the thing that's your damage is also your economic engine? That seems good. That seems really good. Oh my gosh. OK. Um, it's already broken. Ban it. <laughs> Spellblade Strike, one cost, uh, uh, yeah, one cost red. Spellblade Strike. Create a rune chant token. So it's an attack that also then creates a rune chant token. Four damage. Strong. S strong. Huge. Dude, dude, this is going to be stri straightforward. I'm getting the, the newts for you. Straightforward, but hard to play. That's where I'm at. Blood Spill Invocation that's, that's when red. you do your best work. Uh, okay, this is an aura, so it stays in play. That's nice, and it has to go again. So this would be considered a Ruin Blade card and a non-attack action card. So these are all good things. Okay. When an attack action card you control hits, destroy this, create three Ruin Chant tokens. Seems all right. But when your hero is dealt damage, destroy it. That's risky. Ooh, risky business. I'm going to consolidate these into cards. Yeah, cool. You can do whatever you want with your collection that I'm using. <laughs> I thank you for your permission. <clears throat> Let's look at Ruin Flash Red. Again, minus one for each Ruin Chant token you control. A four damage attack that has go again. That seems... Man, this is all so good. How is this beatable? You know, early on in card games when you're <laughs> like, how, how does anyone beat how does this? How does beat the Death Star? All right, so let's look at this card. You guys were dogging on this card. Ninth Blade of the Blood Oath, yellow. Birthday cake here. Birthday cake. Uh, it's a nine cost. Okay. What? Minus one for each rune chant token. Okay, and yeah, now we're back into reasonability. Nine damage attack. Why, why are people dogging on it? Because it's hard to pull off. Well, obviously it is, yeah. You ever tried to sing happy birthday with a crowd? Everybody sings it too slow. This, that's the problem. Mm. Happy birthday. They sing it like a dirge. It's <laughs> unnecessary. Become the Ark Knight. Blue. Zero cost. Visire Specialization. Oh, that seems good. Those are always the fun cards. Choose one. Discard a non-attack action card. Search your deck for a Ruin Blade attack action card. Reveal it. Put it in your hand. Shuffle your deck. Go again. So basically, take a non-attack and turn it into a Ruin Blade attack. You can do that. Or discard an attack action card. Search your deck for a Ruin Blade non-attack. OK, so it's a flippy floppy, basically. OK. So what's your, what are you feeling on the macro Well, nothing right yet. Now? I feel like the macro is create rune chant tokens and start swinging. <laughs> we were swinging. Um, Mordred Tide, zero cost red. Until the end of the turn, if you would create a rune chant token instead, create that many plus one. Are you kidding? <laughs> Steven wasn't ready. This is amazing. Let's read it again. So anytime you create a token, create one more. That seems good. For the whole turn. I would agree with you. So, well, I mean, how many times are you creating multiple tokens in the same turn? I hope many. I mean, you could play Mordred Tide plus two Read the Ruins right there. That's two extra tokens. Then you uh, launch a, doesn't he have an attack thing? You play a Ruin Blade card if you played a non-attack action card. So this is a Ruin Blade card. This is a non-attack action card. So if you play Mordred Tide, Read the Ruins gives you two tokens extra on top of its effect. That's, in, that's, that's insane. How is this? I don't understand how this is fair. Does it seem way better than the cards you've been playing? Well, yeah. In theory, it does. Huh. 
Okay. That's nuts. Okay. Arknight Ascendancy. Red. Six cost. Minus one. It's the same old second verse, same as the first. It's got the Viscerae Specialization. Okay. If it hits, create X Rune Chant tokens where X is the damage dealt by it, and it has Dominate. Straight up. How much does it do? Uh, five damage. Five so damage if, you, if you found there's probably there may be a deck that just buffs Arc Knight Ascendancy to the moon, and that's what it kind of does. That would be insane. I could see some different lines here with this character. That's what I want to really get into when I know like what I'm actually doing. You know? I mean that is the goal. That moment. Oh, often. Let's look at Oath of the Arc Knight Red. Your next Ruin Blade attack gets plus three. So there's an example of what you might play with Arc Knight Ascendancy. Uh, and then you create a rune chant token. Go again. Of course. Yes. Spellblade Assault. Red. Create two rune chant tokens. Four damage attack. Boom. And then reduce two rune chant. Minus one for everything you've got. Create a rune chant token as a defense reaction. Oh my, oh my, oh my. <laughs> oh my, my, my. And so you can create rune chants on defense, too. That seems good. Now is you'd have it, is to that a play, defensive reaction? It is a defense reaction. You have to play a non-attack action card this turn. So what non-attack action cards can you play? On defense? On defense. I mean, you could play Sink Below. You could play def uh Is it an action card? It's or a reaction. It's a reaction, right? How do you play an action on defense? And talk to Kano about that. Huh? Uh, there may be a way. Let's look. Is there any weird ways to do that? Wouldn't that be funny? Sometimes it hits you in games. It's like, you can play an action anytime, and then you're like, ah! My whole life is ah. a lie. Let me know if you can answer that. Pummel? Here sorting. Printed and pummel. 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 Apparently, pummel's a thing. You know what pummel does? Uh, isn't it the thing that Bryce is pulling it up on the screen there? We can't read it, though. Isn't that weird? That is the problem with this. You guys system. can see it, and we really can't right now. Shouldn't it be on the little screen? Ah. Uh, it's hit or miss. There's a <laughs> Depends on the day of the week. Well, obviously. there's just a lot of, you got to restart the computer. There's a lot of weird stuff. Mm. You got to call your grandma, tell her to unplug it, plug it back in. Step one, always. Yeah. Grandma, how did you send me uh, the, the plans to your house in a .zig file through Amazon Mail? It's like, you don't even have any of that on your computer, and somehow Magic. you figured it out. Yeah, my parents do that sometimes. Yeah, it's like I can't even figure out knowing how these systems work, how you could do it that wrong. Yeah. Like what would you, you'd have to, it's like did you install a different operating system just to do this? <clears throat> All right, so people saying slogism, nimbleism, sluggish into arc knight ascendancy, lead the charge, a lot of lead the charge, arc knight ascendancy into slogism or pommel. This is why I decided to start doing this. Because I know you're going to need. I'm going to take those cards and scatter them. That would be fun. All right, so chat, help me out here. So, um, <laughs> what do I do next? Here's the question. So, when you're deciding whether to run red and or yellow and or blue versions of a card, what is the what's the process by which you make that decision? What goes through your brain? What goes through your head? I mean, don't you set up? We'll see what chat says, but I feel like I know you, your advice, but you want to set up. You said you weren't good earlier. So. Whatever your well, they all said they weren't good either. <laughs> We're all not good together. Here's pummel. Sounds like high school. Choose one. Target caliber hammer gets plus three. Target attack action card with the cost two or greater gets plus three. Why would you ever play that? It's an attack reaction. That doesn't work. What's it saying? Pummel. Generic attack reaction. This is supposed to be used with Amplify the Arc Knight. Target attack action card with cost two or greater gains plus four. Yeah, that's the idea. So it's an attack that technically costs a lot, but you pay nothing. And so it can trigger off of cards that have the, if it's a big attack, clause, Got you. basically. That makes a certain amount of sense. All right, so Gajira is saying four attack cards are the cutoff for usefulness. 
So anything under four as an attack, you just wouldn't run, basically. And I understand I'm why. into that, yeah. All the threes cover up the fours. You right. want to at least either do damage or make them pitch two cards to block you. Unless it has an effect that is critical to your deck functioning that you don't need the attack to hit to trigger. Yep. Or, hmm. Nobody's, you guys are giving me suggestions, but nobody's answering the question. I need the logic. Give me the logic of, of why you would choose this or that. Maybe nobody's figured it out. Maybe we're the first to think about this game on a philosophical level. I find that hard to believe. <laughs> but you know, whatever about your float. <laughs> and does pummel uh, cause a discard? Is that the idea? I think that was right. I it's read on it, the top. I read it near, the, near the top of the stack. Why would you put them upside down? Then I can't read them. Yeah, if it hits the defending hero, discards a card. OK, nice. So that's a way to get some damage through. OK, yellow cards seem to be around the least. That's fair. If it's cheap and has go again, that seems important. You know, I'm looking at you, man. You're, you're, the, you're the official. You've been playing this game for years now. Perhaps many years. All right, so Miss Merck, what do you got for me here? So I feel like if you're trying to go wide, even two to three damage go again cards could be good. You probably get that chip damage through. I like that concept, chip yeah. damage. That was my favorite part. I tried golfing twice, and that was the only thing I liked. Chipping? Chipping, yeah. That. Hated putting and hating driving, of course. Um, Get the chip damage through because your opponent is worried about what comes next. That, and that's fair. Right? You get the little, uh, little hey, you want to block this? It's like, well, maybe they got a big one coming. Franco said, Team Covenant, I just made my first flesh and blood order. I'm really happy. Bam. I'll be waiting for it. Greetings from Argentina. That's awesome. Awesome, Franco. I hope it gets to you safely and quickly. And uh, I hope it doesn't get caught up in some weird customs or anything. And I hope you enjoy uh, what we've been told is the paradise of Argentina. Hopefully it is actually a paradise. I wish that on all of us. Uh, Brandon Tan, the idea is to build up You know up I went your... to Argentina, right? No. Yeah, during college. Really? Yep. What were you trying to do? I, well, one thing, I had a friend that was from there. Mm. Uh, and then we had a group of business students that went down uh, and put on a bunch of different seminars and stuff during no. like, a spring break. Very cool. It was pretty cool. It was a great. Uh, Did you learn anything? About what? Mm. <laughs> Yourself? Life? Yeah, it was great. That's actually how I uh, started getting to know Keith Wigner. Oh, He very went on cool. the trip with me. Very cool. Um, you guys, that room, was probably a pretty buddies. straight lace, buttoned up kind of trip, huh? Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, mm-hmm. no wild nights in the no. cabana? I think I was only like 20 at the time as well. I'm not sure what the... What's the Argentinian uh, drinking culture like? Is it rum, probably? What I know is that rum, right? the people there are very friendly. Yeah. Uh, very warm is yeah. the word I would describe it. Uh, physical touch? A big lots deal? of physical yeah. touch, yeah. So you were very Got a kiss on the cheek. <laughs> That's everybody kisses on the cheek. Uh, and also, the coffee was fantastic. Oh, of course. The, they had every morning, they had all these like fresh made pastries out for us mm. and fruit. The fruit was so good. Mm-hmm. But it was, a, it was a lovely trip. I enjoyed the visit a lot. Meantime, I'm trying to install a septic system. Uh, Brandon Powers say, uh, so the idea, build up your ruin chance, unleash a big attack, pummel and slogism to buff that attack, and mainly you want it to be Arknight Ascendancy. I only, I've only got one of those, so I can't build too much of a strategy around that. Uh, Dan Ventucci, checking in with you here. I haven't figured it out, but what I've been looking at is how important the effect of the card is versus the attack power it's giving me. So if the card gives the attack go again, that's more important than boosting my attack, then I choose the blue card. So if the effect is more important, the blue variation. Yeah. If the card is just boosting the attack, then I want the max, which is the red variation. So are you saying that all these yellow cards are worthless? Did I get a third of my box that's just garbage? No. OK. Yeah. So I, I follow similar lines where it's like, first I look at the attack value, which is I want it to be greater not, than three, not rounded in threes. Yeah. Uh, second is the effect. And so like in Bravo, he has a lot of effects that need to do four or more. So anything I really need to hit, I go with the biggest number possible. Mm-hmm. And then there's a lot of cards that, like, I don't really need the, the max effect. So, like, a good example, there's a, I forget which one it is. Um, I think in the uh, Wizard and Kano, I was playing the, like, Whispers card that lets you opt. 
Mm, I had the same thing in Azalea. Yeah. You don't need to opt like 20. You don't need to opt like three or four usually. Yeah, so I think the red is four, the blue or yellow is two or three, and then the blue is two. Mm -hmm. So opt two is fine by me. Yeah. It's like this is a great three resource, and it's also a great just look at the top two cards in my deck. Okay, so use your brain. I get it. Good to hear, Franco. Uh, Dylan said, after building my first Runeblade Blitz deck, my theory is to always float at least one token, to always attack after a non-attack, and build as if your cost-reduced cards will be minus one or two. So Dylan's going wide here. It sounds like just using the Rune Chan as kind of a resource generator and then doing some uh, instances of Arcane along the way. Which makes a certain amount of sense given the, like, only 20 health of Blitz. So you don't have as much time to, like... Because if you can get four, five, six tokens out, all those cards become free. Mm -hmm. And if you can sit there... All you need is three tokens and everything's free. Yeah, so really the ideal there is three, go, three, go, three, go. But if we're dealing with a 20 health game, you might not have enough of those where it's like you build a three and play for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like oh, that concept. Wow. Build, Put it on build a, shirt. a three, play for free. Uh, and so I bet the pacing of that's really interesting. Okay, well then let's get into the things that we actually want. So, do you do you offhand know the new, neutrals that you're interested in? No, let, you want to start start with me on the rune blade stuff. All right, read the runes is definitely a red three, a uh, two, kind of a two. Oh yeah, where's this go? And I think yellow. I think the red and yellow are great here. I mean, uh, the blue only creates one. I wouldn't play the blue. Well, that's the thing is like I'm just thinking if I have any of these reduced buy cards with a read the ruins, a two or a three is almost gonna make it infinitely playable. Right? Yeah, and like the fact that this takes your action is what makes me think the blue is not worth it. Like you'll never play the blue. You're gonna have to spend a whole turn to do this. I forget that go again stuff. Yeah, yeah we only have one action point. So like I think you you have to be creating at least two before this card's playable. And early on, you might use the yellow as a resource. So then it's just late game rune tokens, but the red for three is fantastic. I wonder too. So we're gonna find we're gonna have to find ways to give non attack actions go again. We're gonna have to find that. That's the whole point of this whole deck. Well, nothing here has go again except for a few of them. One of them. <laughs> nothing except for rune flash. I don't need anything. Rune flash is the only chair. one that has go again. <laughs> chair I need nothing with four tray. legs except this chair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so neutrals that give non-attack. Look at this scar for a scar. Yeah, it's staring at me. It's it's do going. You see to... the, do you see the eyes come to life whenever it's at the right angle? Do you see the yeah the, the glowy the, the, the sparkly? Uh... All right, everyone's screaming for lead the charge. Let me read this to you. Red, lead the charge. The next time you play an action card with the cost of zero or greater this turn, gain an action point. That's it. That's what we need. Yeah, we need that. Uh, so there's here's guys two reds. Wrong. Nathan is not wrong here. He yep. was screaming endurance and, and <laughs> downtime at me for so long. I've learned to just ignore what to, he's saying. but to just not listen? Yeah. Um, so then next up we get uh, the yellow version. It's cost one or greater. Gains you an action point. Do you have any one? Cost one or greater? I got Does so many. All of them. Do you want any of the other lead the charges is my point? Let's put yellow in there. The other one's cost two. This is cost one, and then blue is the cost two. You well, don't know. I don't think there's a lot of cost two stuff that would matter. I think it's, a, well, I guess, let me look at, I'll separate them by attack. Don't you see? That's a good way to do it. So we'll get all of our attacks here. Why did I not think about doing this before? Well, big brain time. It's big brain time. That's right, Zach. Thank you. I try my best to help. Okay, Rune Blade action, attack. Attack, attack, attack. Okay, so there, there's a lot of attacks, actually. Here's all of my attacks. Boom. Okay. <laughs> Honorable Discord says, I just want to stop by and say how excited I am to see the experience for Rival Knife uh, <laughs> in Zach's action deck for Arkham. You know it's happening. That's Friday. It's dancing time. I like how people can just pop in on the chat every now and again and just be like, oh, hey, I just want to tell you this. Here's this it's, other thing. It's honestly, it's so like being in the store. It's cool. Because you're hanging out, we're playing, and the people that have been there for a couple hours are still there, and everyone's just familiar. And then it's like, oh, yeah, there comes Phil JQ who's rolling in the store to pick up his LCG pack. And then like, well, hey. oh, hey, Phil, how's it going? I haven't What's seen you. What's the new? What's Phil, the... if you're out there, I hope you're doing well. Uh, that's an actual person's name. Uh, for a local. <laughs> if you can believe it. <laughs> I like it. Uh, and 
you know, like an honorable discourse. Just like, hey, came here just to poke in, say hi, see how just, everyone's doing. Just wanted to say hi. You running birthday cakes? Uh, no, expressly, probably not. So here's my, uh, you guys can't quite see it. It's coming off of the screen a little bit, but um, it's kind of shaped like an F. So I've got one, two, three, four. I've got five attacks, three non-attacks, and one defense reaction. Which is why it's kind of weird to play the deck that's just like, I'm not going to do anything mm -hmm. except build runes. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you can get there, because like we have Red Sigil of Solace as an example. Zero cost gain three. It's an instant. You have the yellow. Was the, like You could play a bunch of cards that like... Is that an... But that's not... Okay, so... We need non-attack action cards. Let's not sleep on this ability. Do you want me to cruise through and s read some of the uh, non-attack action cards that are in the... If we can play a non-attack action card to start the turn, then every Rune Blade card we play will generate a token. Okay. So as an example, I know it's not Slogism, but Nimbleism, zero cost. The next attack action you play with a cost one or less, this turn gains plus three. Okay. That's a non-attack action. Does that have go again? It has go again. Okay, yeah, that's, important. that's important. That's important. Uh, so nimbleism boosts you. Um, Whisper the Whisper of the Oracle is the opt card, zero cost. Go again. Okay, so these are these are actually all good. For just this, generic though. things. I'm just gonna keep going. Do you always skip the moon kiss sun wish thing as well? I'm gonna eventually play it in a deck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Van asking, do we need to balance non-attack and attack cards? I don't know. I don't know. It might, it might come together here pretty quick, actually. Um, Let's hold on, hold on. We'll get there. Because basically, what we're looking at is non-attack action cards that have go again. That's really the the cream of the crop that we need. As an example, come to the fight. The next attack action card you play this turn gains plus three, plus two. Mm -hmm. Plus one, go again. Okay, so that would be that's a great combo, right? Foresight, the next attack action card you play is turn gains plus three. If it's from Arsenal Op two, it also has go again. Okay. So you have another boost. Those are good things. Those um, are very good things. The all good things, all good things. Mm -hmm. So you you have a bunch of that kind of stuff. Uh, well, that that's gonna have to happen. Well, which ones of these do you want? Let's back it up. Let's back it up. Back it in. So Pull out any non-attack action card. It's red version with go again. Right. And then if we think we want to go yellow or blue, we can go digging for them. Did you pull that off the top? Yes. Okay. I did. Don't put it back. All right. So the red come to the fight. Yeah. Do you think you want anything besides red? Just do red for now. And then, like I said, if we, we can need to dig it. through, well, right. it'll give us the best idea. Foresight. And we've got the Nimble Strike, which would have to be with Nimbleism. We've got these generic attacks. I can't wait until I just like understand this game well. It always happens. That's the thing. You just got to believe in yourself. I mean, it will click. There's a very... What I'm starting to learn the more I'm sorting these cards is like there's a, certainly a finite number of different cards right now. It's like graspable. I'm still in that... Like, yeah. Stack. Are those are these all attacks going down? Because those were all attacks. Nope, you were just in the attack section. Oh. Is Let's that see. the only section left, though? I just look in the bottom left corner. They're all yellow. Oh, there's a defense reaction. Now this, I may play a card like Unmovable or something. Did Are you wanting Pummel in here? What's your weapon? What kind of weapon you got? It's just a big blade. But I think the idea is you pummel that Arknight card that when it hits, it generates uh, tokens based on how much damage it did. Mm. So that would obviously be good. I only have one of those, though, so we can't really build around that. But I could see in Constructed that you would. Oh, dude, check this out. Slogism. The next attack action card would two, cost two or greater, gains plus six. And go, it has gold again? Yeah. It's, so oh, 100% that. Look at all these. They're all. Nimbleism is free, and it gives plus three. If yeah. it costs one or less. Yeah. Slogism is three and it costs two or greater. That's everything except the Spellblade Strike. 100% Slogism. Even yellow is doing plus five. Slogism's expensive. Yeah, but plus six is crazy. That is wild. That's the crazy <laughs> number. I'm with you. Okay, and then we've got like Sink Below and stuff, you know? And then technically, that? like, Sink Below is so good. It is. It's always. I'll good. never not sing the praises of that card. 
Last ditch effort. That's hilarious. People, Have you seen this card? People saying super uh, rare. Yeah, generic. You, no cards left in your deck. That's that's interesting. It's not. I'm not gonna play it right but now. But it's close. But at some point, that will matter. People saying uh, pummel is really great to boost even your not that attack, but any attack that costs. So like you could technically hit a slogism into a pummel and give it plus ten. Yes. You certainly could do that, and probably should. Um, Enchanting Melody seems good, actually, here. I always love that card. So it's a non-attack action card. It's a generic action card. And it only gets destroyed if you haven't played a non-attack action card, which I feel like I'm going to be doing every turn, right? Yeah, it's seeming that way. Let's, mm -hmm. pull, <laughs> let's pull those out. <laughs> Chains of Eminence, I'll never, I mean, I should play it at some point. <laughs> but I'm not going to. Well, the named card can't be pitched, but that that's a that's an incredibly good card. Huh. Okay. And then plunder run. The next time an attack action card you control hits, draw a card, played from Arsenal Plus. Plunder run's pretty good here too. Because it's gonna generate that token. They're scattered across different decks, Here's I'm sure. There we go. I throw those under, right? That's where they go there on go top. Here. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, so Ian's saying when building, also, you need to pay for stuff. So blues and yellows are needed to pay. Sometimes a blue pitch card with three defense is good enough to put in the deck. Yeah, which we'll get to that. OK. So you want to just start building? I mean, yeah, so you got 40 slots, uh, step one. Step one. So let's start with your signature cards and see where we go. So things that we know are going to be in. That big three, six attack is in, right? That's a red card for sure. Amplify the Arknight, yes. Yeah. Probably take red versions of all the big attacks with Slogism. Yeah, weirdly, these are four. So does it go down to three and two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a bummer. So two Spellblade Assaults. That's pretty good with, you know, you got your Slogism. It stays at four, so the yeah. threes don't matter much. Rune Flash is a four. So red, ruin, flash. A green. The three can get out of here. Yeah, because this is the minus one for each one. Yeah. That's also minus one. That's, those are still good. Yeah, and then that one makes tokens. Yeah. So draw to the dark dimension. I mean, it's just draw a card, and it's an action, an attack action. It also blocks for three. Maybe this is one of your resource cards. You could potentially play it for three free just to draw a card and try to set up a better combo, drawing your slogism or whatnot. I feel like I would probably do the red in general. This one? Three damage attack. Oh, we said we were, yeah, we said we were gonna do that. Hmm. That's the thing, it's like Yeah. Blocking a three, blocking a one is the same result if you have to play. It costs it. two? What does it even do? Well, it's minus one for each one. It's, a, it's an attack that draws you a card, and it's three defense. Mm. Mm. So like it doesn't even, you don't even have to hit with it for it to draw a card. So it basically, you can just play this for free and draw a card. Do you draw the card before it resolves, or when, you, when it resolves? So you draw into the Dark Dimension, cost costs one less for each. I think it's when you resolves. No, I think it's when it's played, unless it says if this attack hits. Because if you have stuff that immediate, that's where like technically if you had a bunch of pummel style stuff, like attack reactions, that would be really good. Because you might see it and actually get to use it. But if mm. you don't get to, if you're just drawing the card and it doesn't have go again, you don't get to do anything but maybe put it in your arsenal. That's true. That's true. No, no go again is an issue. Uh, let's just leave it there for now. We'll see if it gets there. Okay. Blood spell is the one you, uh, when an attack action card hits, destroy it, create three run chance. That seems important. That seems really good. Yeah. Now, and then I imagine yellow would be two, yeah, and then blue yeah. would be one. So I probably put the red and yellow of that like I did with this read the runes myself. I just can't take damage. I'm going to put it in the rune pile. <laughs> Let's just look at it. OK. Oath of the Ark Knight. It's a non-attack action. It has go again. Therefore, I at least run the reds. Oath <laughs> of the Ark Knight. Next round blade attack is plus three. This one, next round blade attack is plus two, and then plus one. 
creates a Ruin Chant token, and it has a go again, and it's a non-attack action card. So, like, here's what's interesting, though, is, like, look at Oath of the Arc Knight compared to Red, Red Foresight, mm -hmm. or Red Come to the Fight, but Red Foresight is one for plus three and go again. So you're paying one for a Ruin Chant token at that point. This also blocks better. That gives you a Ruin Chant token? Yeah, create a Ruin Chant token. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I didn't see that part. So, same Which with could like, be important because then your next attack is probably minus one because you just made a Ruin Chant token, and these all are reduced by the number of tokens. So it kind of costs one in that yeah. context. Yeah, that's really good. But that doesn't, maybe we run them all. We're getting famous over here. On Instagram? On uh, Twitch. No. Oh. Gonna become one of them grade A influencers. Buy followers, primes, and views on bigfollows.com. It's a free tip for all of you. Yeah, don't don't go to that website. <laughs> yeah, you want to get hacked? Put them all in for now. Okay, read the runs. Read them. What Definitely the red one. Do we already have it? Yeah, we already have the red and the yellow in there. Yep. Okay, and then reduce to ruin chant. Just creates a token as a defense reaction. I like a four defense reaction. Play the meta. Cost? Cost yeah. you one. Oh yeah. Maybe a three as well. Yeah. Oh, definitely. The blue for two, and it's less exciting. The blues are always less exciting. Okay, so technically two, four, six, eight. And we'll figure out how to pay for this stuff later. Well, I think that's where we're going to get in the, the neutral cards. So this is tw uh, 22. Yeah, 22. So you have 18 slots left at current. And we'll get back to I think resource curve is really something you start looking at after you're getting down to your 40 cards. Yeah. And then you start determining which effects can you take a little less heat on. And Brandon's right on this. Um, n careful not to run too many generics because we need Rune Blade cards to trigger Visceray's ability. Yeah. But that's what uh, all the, and your weapon. We got over half. I don't think the weapon will do it. You have to play a Rune Blade card. You have to mm. play the card. Yeah. So you only have six of those. Well, any Rune Blade card. Oh, really? After the non-attack action card, which can be generic. You have to play a Ruin Blade card to generate tokens. So that's 22. I think yeah, you're, you're so doing, we'll have half okay. the What deck. about your fancy cards? Did you look at this? Yeah, they, they come in later. I'm going to put Ninth Blade of the Blood Oath in there because... No, maybe I'm not. Become the Arc Knight, of course. That's great. Zero cost tutor, yes. Let's just put that here. Mordred Tide, 100%. Plus yes. Become the Arc Knight. Art is fantastic. Mordred Tide Red is absolutely good. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And then Arc Knight Ascendancy is kind of the, the big, yeah, let's put one Arc Knight Ascendancy right in there. It's all we've got. But if that comes together with Slogism and come to the fight, suddenly why not? things have gotten good for us. OK, so you technically have 15 slots left. Mm -hmm. And then you have to decide, like, these are all attack boost. Mm -hmm. um, this is action gaining. This is just opting. And then this is also attack boosting. So I think we definitely need lead the charge. Okay. In here. Red? Um, what is, is red cost? Zero. Now the blue is cost two or more. So if you're going that route. Yeah, blue is easy. Let's do blue. Oh, we yeah. lead the charge for sure. Like I think that's a really good example of most of your attacks you care about giving this to can be blue. Yeah. So I'm actually, I mean, where do you stand on the red and the yellow? Uh, maybe maybe none of them. Or maybe uh, leave, them on the, leave them on the table here. Okay. So blue lead the charge for sure. So then you you have technically one of these boosted, right? Which one boosted? Boosted, what does that mean? That boosted an attack. This thing? Uh, yeah, Oath of the Arc Knight does, okay. yeah. So you've got and a couple there. A token. Um, what, what's your favorite flavor of boosty here? I mean, Slogism plus six is crazy town in let's my do, Yeah, let's do two Slogism. But you got to pay for it. Yeah, well, it's the moment. Slogism red? Cost two I don't or think greater. You're doing nimblism. Is the blue slugism cost three or greater? And then the no, the blue slugism is just plus just plus, plus four or five. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe maybe blue slugism is fine. I don't know. It's a gen it's a non-action attack. It has to go again. But that's where, like, to me, blue slugism over like, um, you know, come to the fight. Mm -hmm. It's like. It costs a lot more, but a lot of times your big attacks are going to be hopefully free, and then it's giving you resources early on. Let me find it. Blue slog. Yeah. 
Yeah, because like it really just needs to hit once with that Arc Knight Ascendancy for it to be bomb. Yeah, blue slagism is a plus four. Like that seems really good. Yeah, for three. Yeah, absolutely. Put that in there. Um, risk for the Oracle. The op doesn't matter. The go again is nice. Zero cost. I would run blue whisper the Oracle. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's do that. Whisper. 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 Get in my Vespa. Apparently people saying blue pummel also good. I'm going to guess it does a similar thing. It's plus two. Yeah, because you always get the effect of discarding a card if it hits. Yeah. So that's totally fair. The effects, you see? The effects. Mm. The blue oracles are nowhere to be found. I think I know where they are. I think they're in Azalea. Let me see if it's in there. Booster pack, pack stack. Booster stack? Yep, boom. Done. Speaking of booster stack. Azalea nerfed. I'm just uh, finding some sweet dash cards in here. Yeah, Brandon, it's not that important, but I like having a zero cost resource generating card that can trigger as a non-attack action for setting up my turn to create ruin, ruin tokens. Like zero cost non-attack action card with go again. That's super good, I think, for this kind of a deck. It's not about the opt. That's why. Blue, blue foresight is probably similar. I already got them. I know, but you can put them back in your Azalea deck. <laughs> yeah, we got all the oaths in already. It's Blitz with a limited collection. We're, we're going to do what we can with the cards that we have. All oaths are in. That's how you play the game. That's how you play the game. It's the fun of it. Just one of the oracles. I'll grab another yeah, one. Yeah, that's all that was in the stack. OK. Oracle and then Foresight. Could be an O. Oh, no, it's just, it's just bad all around, honestly. It really just is. Come to the fight red, probably. If you're doing it, I mean, blue pommel. We might be at the limit here. How many? Uh, how you many were at 25 we here. Okay. 26, 27, 28, 29, 31, 35. You got five left. 35. Five cards left. We don't. Have, we have blue lead the charge only. We might do all lead the charges. They here. Getting that extra action point, I think, is really critical for a lot of these turns. Okay. One, one slot left. Let's do it. Then we have we have all the oaths. They're right here. We have one yellow and one blue and two red is all that we have. It's all that we own, is what I should say. It's important to keep that in mind. And then slogism is gonna buff the boom. Last tour, I like your style. Last slot birthday cake. Let's go. Put it in. Happy the birthday. birthday. Cake it was just in your hand, right? Somewhere. I don't have it. It disappeared. Then did you already put it in? Nope. Mm -hmm. Birthday cake. Isn't that weird. How did? How does this? How does this happen all the time? I don't know. Did you put it in your uh, uh, azalea stack? No. <laughs> put it in the azalea deck. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I could help. I'll just keep looking. <laughs> we were looking. Let me put this back. You know what I should do? I should just put in one of these promo scar for a scars. Scar doesn't really fit into your deck. Nope, not at all. We're running yellow. Uh, no, nope. yellow rune flash. No. Nope. Spellblade assault. You know that's no. Nope. Like go again. All right, I'm just gonna add one come to the fight then. All right, you did it. Because I can't find the birthday cake. When I find it, I'll swap it. 
Okay, lead the charges, slogism, etc. It didn't get absorbed into this tank, did it? I hope not. Reduced to ruin chance. Oath of the Ark Knight, done. Then I get to go on a fun journey. <laughs> Do you have the sleeve packs? Are they back here? The journey. I, I don't have them. Where did they go? Oh, I think I put them in the champion stuff. Okay, and then these guys are all sorted and done. Let's just take this for a spin. Now, meantime, what I will need from you guys is the timing on rune chant tokens. At one point, I understood it, and I have since forgotten, which is unfortunate. But it would be a good way to kind of understand how, basically, how all of this works, how the entire system works. All right, there's everything. Those guys are done. Technically, that's done. Rune chant tokens, just because I'll need them. Include those. Scar for a scar, you're beautiful. Unfortunately, I'm not running you. Katsu and Reinar, more scar for a scar, still beautiful. Bullseye bracers, nope. Pistol, nope. Okay. Did you see one a day? There were two packs of sleeves right here. Mm -mm. Can't tell you. Couldn't tell you, man. No packs. I don't think I have any down here. We've gone through about a thousand sleeves over the course of these games. Game plans. I'll find more. Find them. Let's see if we got soaked up in here. So yeah, so you play the attack card, and then the ruin chance, do they immediately go off, or do they get added to a stack that's eventually going to resolve before the attack resolves? Um, so like, let's see. When you play an attack, destroy ruin chant and deal one arcane damage target opposing yours. So I play it, and then destroy the ruin chant token goes on the stack. Can Zach respond before that resolves, right? Or maybe not, because it's like a framework kind of thing. So anything that he has that would trigger when an attack action is played would also go there, and then the, the turn player would decide the order in which they resolve, I believe, right? Okay. Because that's not there's not a passer play after a framework thing is generated, I, I wouldn't imagine. Rule by uh, rule by guess. That's the way to do it. Okay. For the attack resolves. Okay. Good. I think I'm going crazy. <laughs> so it'll be basically play an attack action card, ruin chance, go on the stack. Anything else that attack action card uh, triggers would happen there. Those would resolve. Then we would go to the defense step where defense cards are played. And then we would go to reactions, and then we, we would eventually go down and resolve that attack at the end of that chain. That makes sense, I think. Makes sense to me, which means it has a 50% chance of being right. You find him? Gross. Sigil of Solace, too. That's a good card. You guys run Sigil of Solace? These little instant heal cards are really interesting to me. Zero cost, gain three. That's as good. Isn't that better than all most, most of the defensive cards? I'd rather be able to gain three than block for three. Well, that's interesting. Right? Why do you guys not play Sigil of Solace? 
I guess because it can only block. That's fair. Like, only block. And I mean that by, like, it can only add health rather than uh, doing other things that your deck might want to do. Well, you, don't, you can play an instant whenever, though, Brandon. So you could spin this on your opponent's turn. It's an instant, right? So they can attack, and then you can just gain three health rather than blocking for three. <clears throat> but particularly against like wizard and arcane damage, it's also way more efficient than blocking the arcane damage with the barrier. Yeah. So technically, another caveat there is like you can't block. So like if it hits mm -hmm. triggers, you can't stop those from that. Right. You can't stop it. But it could, you know, like in those instances where you're doing seven dominate, and I can only block with a four card. I can heal for three and then block for four and yeah. technically get around it. All right, let's talk dash before we go to the gear and equipment section of your build. Yeah, because uh, I also. That'd be simple. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, dash says you start the game with a mechanologist item with a cost two or less in the arena. Okay. So I'll look at those in a second. Tech low plasma pistol action: remove the steam counter from it. Attack action: spend a resource. If there are no steam counters on it, put a steam counter on it. Go again. So it's basically, it has to, you have to spend a resource to load it, and then you can fire it on the same turn, technically. Yeah. Uh, Mechanologist items, really quick. Uh, these are all the ones. The ones that the, you can bring in. Yeah, uh, at least these are the ones from the, uh, which is cool, because that probably means there's a few ways to build dash, which we'll look at in a second. I'm just grabbing all those out. Are there any of those? Oh my goodness, they are. <laughs> And we're off. <laughs> In the there's common items. I was gonna say like, oh, is it only like a rare thing? Oh my word! All right, well, this is gonna be a fun, fun ride. The number of items that you could possibly. There are this stack so far. That's what you could start with. Yeah. Cost two or less. Are there all those cost two or less? So far, yeah. What? I'm just wow. grabbing all my items and I'm gonna it's run like through those first. Console. Yeah, except for you start the game with it in play. How about that? Yeah, I don't like that a lot. I, w I could have used that in Netrunner. That would have been super fun. It's, I mean, imagine if you had your ID ability and your console, it just starts in play. That's yeah. actually kind of cool. It opens up a lot of builds, really. That's neither here nor there, though. No, it's well, I'll put that in my notes well, in case. There. You know, it's there. <laughs> All right, first we have the Induction Chamber Red. Two cost, action, re spend a resource. If there are no steam counters on Induction Chamber, put a steam counter on it, go again. So kind of like the weapon. Once per turn, attack reaction. Remove a steam counter from the induction chamber. Target mechanologist pistol gains go again. So it gives the pistol attack go again? So it gives a uh, mechanologist pistol. So you can potentially go twice with it that turn. Load it for one, attack with go again. Load it for one, attack. You got it. Okay. Which you pow, know me. Pow. Uh, guns blazing. Let's do it. Uh, Ian says induction chamber is key if you have it as a it's a super. Well, I got two of them. Oh, you got so many. Just in case. All More right. than enough. But I'm gonna consider some other weird options just because I want to see what it's like. <laughs> uh, all right, we get cognition nodes blue. Action resource. If there are no steam counters on it, put a steam counter on it. Go again. You're getting the idea. Once per turn, <laughs> attack reaction. Remove a steam counter from it. Target attack action card gains. If this hits, put it on the bottom of your deck. So technically, you could like put stuff on the bottom. And that's an item, so it comes out and stays in play. So even if I don't start with it, these are cards I can just have in my you deck. You can have in your deck and play them, yeah. Uh, Aether Suit, or Aether Sink Yellow, one cost. Aether Sink enters the arena with a steam counter on it. Action, resource, if there are no steam counters on it, put a steam counter on it, go again. You're seeing the theme. Instant, remove a steam counter from it. Aether Sink gains Arcane Barrier 2 until the end of turn. Oh, that's clever. You could sideboard that. So you can Arcane Barrier more than anybody with Dash. If you have the gear and the Aether Sync that you Ready start with. Ready to go. Huh. Con convection Amplifier Red, zero cost. Convection Amplifier and it's play with two steam counters on it. When it has no steam counters on it, destroy it. Probably not the thing I'm going to start with. Remove a steam counter from Convection Amplifier. The next attack action card you play this turn against Dominate. It's going in the deck. <laughs> All right, and then we have red hyperdriver. Well, Han Solo action. Hyperdriver <laughs> enters the arena with three steam counters on it. When it has none on it, destroy it once per turn effect. When you would boost a card, remove the steam counter from hyperdriver and gain a resource. Yeah, you know the boost thing. You hip to the boost. No, it's a boost thing. You'll you'll find cards that give you boost. All right. If I keep saying boost, does it does it come across? 
Boost. Boost. What about the boost? <laughs> Makes some men uncomfortable. Boost. What's up, Brandon G? Hey, good afternoon to you. Boost. All right, let's keep going. Beautiful weather in Oklahoma. My gosh. Uh, you guys. Dissipation shield. Two cost. Dissipation enters with four counters. At the beginning of your action phase, destroy it. If it has no... If you can't remove a steam counter from it, instant. Destroy a dissipation shield. The next time your hero would be dealt damage this turn, prevent X, where X is the number of steam counters on it. Right on. You don't want to start with that one, I mm. wouldn't imagine. Unless you're worried about, like, aggro to the max, so... I'm not. I'm just not concerned. Uh, then we got the blue optical monocle. <laughs> Zero cost optical monocle. It has a flow to it. Uh, enters the arena with five steam counters on it. When it, it has no steam counters on it, destroy it. Action. Remove steam counter from it. Opt one. Go again. So what does it do in normal people talk? You get five opt ones. Nice. Cool. <laughs> Which is good, actually. Doesn't her boost require the top card of the deck being something? I don't know what a boost is. Where does the... Uh... We haven't gotten to the boost. Oh, we haven't gotten to the boost stuff. All right, next up we have Locked and Loaded, and this comes in three colors. Uh, oh, it's just an action. It's not even an item. The next Mecha Mechanologist attack action card you play this turn gains plus three. If you have boosted this turn, opt one. Go again. Well, what in Sand Hill is this? All right, check out Boost. All right, hold on. Right on top. It. Throttle. All right, we'll do it. Throttle red. Two cost boost. As this cost to play throttle, you may banish the top card of your deck. If it's a mechanologist card, throttle. Gains go again. Mm, okay. So you banish the top card of your deck, it goes away, and if it's a mechanologist card. So I want a bunch of mechanologist cards, and then I don't ever need to opt. That's correct. We'll see if that ends up working. But out. you don't ever need to. Oh, yeah, you're saying you wouldn't need to opt because yeah. it would be a natural consequence of the deck. You got it. Spark of Genius dash specialization. Yeah, we'll see. Search your deck for a mechanologist item card with the cost X. Put it into the arena, then shuffle your deck. If you have boosted this turn, draw a card. X is the cost you pay for this. So you pay two, go get a mechanologist item, play it for two. Pay two, go get an item, play it for free, or play it for two. You you pay a number to play Spark of Genius. Oh, right on. You go okay. get an item that costs that much or less and put it into play. Classic. Just absolutely classic. All right, all right. Well, let's keep on reading. <laughs> it's exactly what you do early on. Just keep, you got to get a keep context reading. for what's going on with these things. All right, next we have Pedal to the Metal. And there is only, oh, there's one of each, but it's rare, and I literally have one of each, so we'll see how fun this is. Probably we should run them all. Uh, two cost red, it does five damage. If Pedal the Metal hits, your next attack this turn gains Dominate. Boost, as this is a cost to play Pedal the Metal, you may ban the top card of your deck. If it's a Mechanologist card, Pedal the Metal gains go again. So you're literally just on 40 Mechanologist cards, right? <laughs> that's looking that way. That's what it looked like to me. What's up, Aiden? Next, we have Pour the Mold, red. It comes in all three flavors. <laughs> Strawberry, <laughs> banana, and blueberry. Uh, pour the Mold, red is zero cost. Go again. Put a mechanologist item with a cost two or less from your hand into the arena. If you have boosted this turn, put a steam counter on it. Go again. Hmm. So yellow is one cost, and blue is zero cost. So I won't be playing the blue. You sure? Definitely not going to play the blue, okay. but we'll come back to that. Now let's look at the basic cards. That was all the fancy pants. I like the. I lead with the basics. We're very different. You people. lead with the fancy. Well, I got to see what my big plays are, and then I build to that. Uh, I start with the foundation, Zach. We're literally different people. In case <laughs> you, you, in case, you did, in case people watching didn't know. All right, red throttle. We already covered it. That's six. Six is a, a decent number. What's a better number for me is five. Even four is great. So this is a this is a great card uh, out of blue. I, like I like this a lot in each color actually, because six damage is a fine number. It has go again, which is what makes it so fine. But blue is super good. Four damage attack with go again. Yeah, hundred percent. So you could maybe cut the yellow and red if you get down to it. Yeah, but yeah, yellow at five is pretty good too. <laughs> That's you know fine. I mean? Five is good. Yeah. It's the, the red good. six is the weird one. Zipper hit one cost red. Uh, it has boost and it can go again. What? Does five? Yes. Si, se, puede. I guess this is why dash is good, right? It's just good go again attacks. I can. So I you can... naturally have to go wide, right? So you're going to be doing a bunch of a bunch of attacks I mean, in a turn. Even the blue. I mean, honestly, if it's got go again, I'm not exactly worried about you shutting it down. Yeah. 
All right. You're let's... like it's just like a it's just like a machine katsu. Is that fair? What is happening? Over the loop is basically the same thing. Two cost, does five, and then if you boost, it has go again. Does it have an effect? Uh, it hits, put it at the bottom? Yeah. Okay, so it's like your salvage shot. Zero to 60, zero cost, boost, it can, can go again. Zero for four, don't mind if I do. Zero for two on the blue version, don't mind if I do. Holy macaroni. Then there's a couple other cards I left out earlier. Pour the mold red. Oh no, I covered that, right? Yeah, it's already there. Just make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, yeah. well that's interesting. That's a word for it. Does it seem, it seemed pretty straightforward, right? I think so. Run all the boost cards? Hey kid, you ever, uh... You ever run those boost cards? Hey, kid. So, like, that's where, honestly, optical monocle is less interesting to me if I don't need to opt. So there's an opt path. Locked and loaded also gives me plus, but if I've boosted, I get opt. So the opt version would basically just be less min-max to mechanologist cards, which would be more interesting, but maybe not as buildable in Blitz. Yeah, and I'm, I'm wondering, like, what neutral cards would be worth not running all Mechanologist 4 out of Dash? Yeah. Does anyone have any examples of that? I imagine there are plenty. <laughs> Brandon says no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only if you're doing neutral. That's what I was saying. It's like... I think there's an opt path where you play neutral cards, but I'm curious what neutral cards are worth playing. I think you're going to play the play the dash cards and go version of this deck. That's how I'm feeling. Right? I mean, they're it, literally, it's right in front of you, you know? Six. Defense reactions. Yeah, all mech seems to be the thing. Why wouldn't you? That boost mechanic is interesting, and it incentivizes you staying essentially faction pure. Which is, so t technically the best dash decks in the long run should be the ones that are able to bring in neutral cards that like amplify the good effects. This feels like the Django Fett deck to me. Yeah. You know, right? Where it's like easy to build out of the box, and so it starts dominating, and then eventually people learn to play around it. So that's the one. I'm going to start with the induction chamber, because why not? So that means I don't need this one. The induction chamber is what you're doing? Mm-hmm. Remove a steam, target the pistol against go. So you're just going to do the old blast and blast. It really feels like Django, then. Jared Warden saying run red and blue black alley break lines. That That's a, uh, or back alley break lines. Break lines. Black that. If Say it, it five times in a row, black. Isn't that the one that if it gets put face up in your arsenal, you gain an action? You opt, I thought. No, it maybe is gaining an action, yeah. I don't know. Card you start with counts as part of your deck. Thank you, Taylor. That's good. Brandon says if you go aggro, you won't need induction chamber. Really? I say you live your best life here, though. You, you do, as the, as the critics say, you know, you do you. I like this. I guess I should start sleeping. I think we've lost that one card also. The birthday cake? Yeah. I looked everywhere. Huh. It's gone. It vanished. It really vanished. I don't know how that could happen. Obviously, because that, it can't. Oh, here it is. <laughs> you gotta believe in reality. I'm not doing it. Does this mean that dash is basically just straightforward? Run all the cards you have? Maybe. Well, you can at least start there, and then you can cut, right? That's right. That's what I'm counting. Do you guys run, if you were doing dash and blitz, do you run only dash cards? Yeah, break line face up gives you an action point. Courtesy of 
Jared. Philip says he runs only dash cards. Yeah, that's where I'm at. I think I've got to cut one. Really? Just that? Just like that? All your mech cards, and then you just cut well, them? Well, I, I made decisions on stuff not to run. That counts. Don't forget that, too. i got to cut two, then. I definitely made a, f a couple choices, but it was, I mean, obviously, when I'm not looking at neutrals, it's not as many choices to be made. Envy that. Yeah, Tate says that the, apparently the uh, constructed decks are weirdly defensive. So, the, I mean, the whole world gets bizarre and constructed, as you would expect. Does she play the induction chamber, double pistol, and that's her attacks? She's just, like, making, putting pressure on your hand, and then she blocks everything you're doing with that her seems, cards in hand? That seems reasonable. I mean, you, it would make sense, right? When you have to go up to 60 cards, you just don't have enough mech cards to, to fill the gap. So then the op strategy probably gets much better. Jared's saying two induction chambers give you three weapon attacks. Yep, good for end game. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. Four attacks at the end game, somehow. Dash control. What does control mean in this game? Everybody says control. Every deck is a control deck, ultimately. That's my theory. It always has been in all games. You're controlling something. You're either controlling hand or tempo or what have you. But uh, yeah, what what does control even mean? <laughs> yeah, Jordan, <laughs> got those new sleeves. Here we go. I'm about to break it open. I'm glad to be running Slogism. I've been wanting to run that card for a while. So another worthy deck building component is actually figuring out your armor going in. Yeah, very much. <laughs> we didn't do that. But basically, like, the, like there's the one that you can destroy to give any your next card go again, mm -hmm. which I assume, it, I don't know if it's class specific or not. Uh, the class specific uh, dash card is Achilles Accelerator. Instant destroy it, it gains one action point. Actually, it's really only if you have boosted this turn, and it's Arcane Barrier 1, so that seems pretty good. So, dash control um, is, as you were saying, multiple pistol attacks and tons of defense reactions. So they can't get damage through, and you're just doing too many attacks for them to block them all. And without having to spend cards. That's right. It's the main thing. Yeah, without having to spend cards. Blake, checking in. Do you think Full Constructed or Blitz is more fun? Never played Full Constructed, so can't speak to it. I think the way they do it where you bring 80 cards and then you get to see your opponent's uh, hero, and then you, cool. you basically kit out your armor and choose the 60 cards you want to bring to the game is really smart. Joseph McKay on uh, Facebook, I always stop and stare at this game. Cheers. Hmm. If you want to do more than stare, you can get a free deck on the website right now. Get two Ira decks and start playing. Check it out. Just pay the shipping. Good to have you either way, Joseph. Just pay him. I, I've been calling. I, I like to call you guys out on chat um, because when I popped in when Zach was solo streaming and he like said my name, it like was the strangest thing on earth. Chemicals firing in your brain. It was so weird. I was like, ah, it felt kind of like I was exposed. <laughs> I was like, ah, you've been tagged. He knows I'm here. Uh, but it was it was weird. It was like very bizarre to actually connect in that kind of a way through the uh, through the screen. Huh? Isn't that right, Jared Warden? Does this make you feel weird, Jared? We'll see if he agrees. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got this array. Doesn't help the way you were saying it. Probably. Yes, yeah, probably not. Um, where is our gear? Do we have a gear thing? Is that what that it's is? A gear pile. Arc Knight cards, neutral cards. Let's just take a second to appreciate the Scar for Scar promo is available exclusively through your Covenant subscription. You're going to want to get three boxes because that's a full play set of these. So three of these, guys. Oh, you get the sweet helmet if you want it. And free shipping in the States. I'm just sorting these by type real quick. Taylor, yeah, one day it will be less weird because you'll meet us in person. 
when we can't kill you with our germs. Uh, <laughs> Jordan Hightower saying, I've played two games in total. I'm thinking about going to a sealed tournament in a couple weeks. I'll be totally rocked. It'll be a blast. Jordan, that is amazing. Sealed would be, I, I mean, again, uh, you guys have heard me diatribe about this forever, but I only, at the, by the end of Spoils, I only played Sealed, really. It was the only thing I really enjoyed. Uh, and that's awesome. That's a, that's a fine thing to do if you want to do it that way. So I would definitely do Sealed. If it's, if it's anywhere in the area, oh my gosh. Yeah, how sick would it be? Build, your, just, build your collection, is that right? If we could just go to a Sealed locally right now. Tom McCall says, uh, likes getting a shout out, makes me feel famous. That's awesome. Tom McCall. Tom McCall. Tom. I kind of McCall. In a, Tom. A weird kind of way. Hello, Tom. Have you seen the latest? Uh, We've been watching you for years. <laughs> the latest Toy Story movie. Uh, no, a little past that. It's hilarious. I'm just kidding. It's one of the greatest movies. In fact, I forget about that when I think about old movies that I liked. Toy Story is on my. I always ask people their top five movies. Not always. It's a common thing I do in a social setting. I was so devastated by the army men getting blown up. Mm. Oh my gosh. Sad news. That sticks with me. Well, hey, the latest one's not a... Uh, it's also got some sad beats. Anyways, one of the characters in there is named Duke Kaboom. Yeah. He's a Canadian stunt man toy. That's <laughs> And it's hilarious. Duke Kaboom <laughs> is what that reminded me of. Tom McCall. Taylor saying, I don't know. I had a bad experience with drafting when I tried Magic the Gathering. So here's the thing. Obviously, magic's magic, uh, and and that game can speak for itself. But the difference between drafting and sealed is very different because drafting you don't have any input on anybody else's experience when it comes to deck building. Um, so, like what I ran into sometimes with, dra with drafting is there were people who were experienced drafters who kind of knew the idea of making sure that everybody kind of was getting past the cards that they were trying to get because. They knew to pass you your cards, and you knew to pass them their cards because you were signaling them by the way that you were pulling out a pack. That's all nonsense. So that's a whole game within a game thing that, if you have a good group, can be super fun. But with Sealed, you just get your own collection of cards. You build your deck, and you go. So I think if anything's going to be more uh, abrasive, Draft is going to be more abrasive than Sealed, uh, just because if you start you know, passing people stuff that they weren't expecting, and then it's like, oh, look at this noob doesn't understand that I'm building this three high, you know, land mana deck, and now I don't have the things that I need, and their deck's going to be bad, and my deck's going to be bad, and... Etc. I'm leaving. It's a lot about who you're playing with, honestly. Yeah. I'm leaving. And I wouldn't have any idea what to draft in this game. Are you kidding me? Let's go ahead Can you imagine that. getting past a pack and it's like, take the card? It's like, no, I, I mean, don't. the nice thing about it is you have all the class cards, so those that story kind of writes itself on uh, that front but it it's a lot and it's tough like especially when you're new when everyone's new to a game uh everyone's kind of just wading their way through it mm. yeah we'll get the crown of dichotomy for it's sure so, uh, you just have to play it because it looks that good yeah you gotta have those horns all right so there's those combos not oh i can't run the ninja cards yeah oh goliath gauntlet's nice for me I don't want bracers. So you start to realize pretty quickly what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Are my attacks big? Or are my attacks small? Etc. Iron Rot. Don't need the mate. Well, destroy Mage Master Next non attack action card you play against. Go again. Oh my gosh. Yes. Unless. Do. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mage Masters makes sense. And then what am I going to wear? So Vest gets me destroy the next attack action. Cost two less. That could be good. Bark Bone. That's Brute only. OK. So one of the things I saw discussed on some like really advanced blog or video or something was that Brute can come in with like six, five or six, like reduction just through equipment. So they like have six extra health almost at the start of the game. That pretty, seems good. That's pretty cool, right? That's pretty cool. And like choosing whether you want to do like iron rot or an ability is like you're losing one health by making that choice. Indeed. But the abilities are so much more attractive. 
Here's my kit. Don't tell Steven. He's right there. I'm here. Been here the whole time. Some say. We were dashing around. I think I think I'll do um I don't know, what do I do? Heartened? Heart and cross strap? Cost two less to play. I don't even know what that would be. What would that be? Actually, that's a lot of my attacks, yeah. Yeah, so that that's kind of my in case I don't hit my rune blades or my rune tokens. Let's go. All right, we've, we made it. It's game time. Okay. See you all next week. See you next week. I love that crown of dichotomy. It's because it reminds you of an Asgul. But it's cool. It's got the glowy colors on it. I like the glow. Yeah, you're not wrong. Jared, in quotes, <laughs> quoting Dash. So anyways, <laughs> I started blasting. We find myself, I find myself again with a character who can shoot a gun a lot. Yep. Let me go get my thing. Start of the game. This card. It's in here. Okay, so then I'm going to be deciding. So I'm going to try to stack up this array. I will do that for the rest of my life, and I'm sorry for all of you out there. Induction chamber. Let's get it going. Is this cold foil? Yes, it is. I like this one. Oof. That's, the cold foil doesn't, it's hard to pick that up on anything. I like it. It feels like magic, though. Yeah. Like if you stumbled across an actual magic weapon. It's like subtle, subtle foil. Subtle pretty foil. bird. Pretty bird. Pretty, pretty bird. That's pretty. You can kind of see it. Anyways. Ah, oh, man. Here we go. Are you ready? It's pretty cool. Like, ultimately, this is our third uh, blitz stream. And we've got six decks built, and we've played all of them. So I guess that's pretty goals? pretty good. We did a couple seals, and then we're like 12 to 15 hours in to Constructed. Yep. That, that feels pretty good. I would be curious to know how many hours we've gotten out of the amount of boxes we bought. You know what I mean? Like, just in terms of entertainment value. Well, if you don't count the deck building I've been doing on the weekends, um, we've streamed probably 35 hours of worth mm -hmm. so that's with two of us that's you know 70 hours total of expenditure we're two and a half boxes in of each set five boxes total so far about two dollars an hour five boxes I'm seven and that's just that's including all the streams right yeah beautiful uh we're paying about ten dollars an hour in cards at this second at this second yeah but How like many boxes have we opened two and a half of each set that's five boxes. Set, five boxes, yeah. okay. But like, ultimately, even if we just play one Blitz day with each hero like we've been doing, it's going to end up being like 7 or $8 an hour. But the, obviously, the upside of all this is that you keep that stuff. And it keep, <laughs> right, right, right. You don't have a... Co like, we're, I, we did the map yesterday on Champions because we've been doing the Marvel Mondays every week since last August. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine the, the I, return on that? It's like at least 250 hours... And a lot of those Marvel Champions streams in early isolation were like seven, eight hours. <laughs> they were, weren't they? Uh, so then I, I think I had only, because it's the core set plus uh, a scenario pack, mm -hmm. two scenario packs, which is like $100 total, and then five hero packs. So it's like 175 bucks for 250 plus hours. And that's, that's just what amazing. I played on camera. Yeah. And it's not just entertainment. It's like excitement. Uh, invigoration is what I want to say. Vigorous. Blake, that's a good idea. Would we ever think about creating and selling pre-made starters for uh, like the next? That is not Crucible, but the next one. I mean, it's a good idea even with Arcane Rising. We, we're opening product to sell as singles, and so we probably have a ton of those common, uncommon armor pieces. You could pretty easily string together those decks. Robert Ballard, uh, good question here. So first Flesh and Bloodstream, so welcome. First of all, I'm glad to have you here. Um, are there heroes in packs, or do they come from display boxes? So these are, where are the token cards? Do we have them somewhere? These will work too. So yeah, so there's one of these token cards in every pack. Can you see this? Actually, let me, I'll do it on the big camera. So they're double-sided, and they come with a random either hero or weapon or token 
Like this is the Quicken token, and then there's the Dawn Blade. And in our experience, so every box, you open one box and you have all heroes and all weapons from these token cards. I think they're distributed in that kind of a way. I can't, you know, I can't prove that, but. Yeah, and then apparently in Arcane Rising, the second set, because there's no starter decks to get those heroes from, if you buy a booster box and it panned out in the boxes we've opened, you get the young and adult versions of each hero in the set. Odd Zax. All right, draw four, right? First turn's free, they say. Hmm. Yeah, no problem, Robert. Glad to help. Can you hand me a, a couple of uh, dice? I'm going to have some stuff to be marking. Dice, yes. Mm -hmm. Tons. Oh, wait, we got to have health, too. Yep. All right, so here's some die. Here's going to be my health. You're going to hand me a bunch of the same color for my health. It's usually black or white. Yeah. Like, yeah I, I see them. And I get 20 starting health with a little dash. Yep, everybody, everybody got 20. Except mm -hmm. wizard. Wizard's special. Wizards are always special. They level up, and then late game, they're broken. Now, you're going to notice I have a six and a four, but I'm not doing that to annoy you. Is it because you got the gunshot die? Yep. The old shotgun die. Yeah. What up, Jeremiah? Yeah, this is the first game. All right. Uh, so, let's do this. You know what I mean? I uh, don't know yet. You haven't done anything. I'm going to generate three res I'm going to use uh, the... Play the card. Induction of chamber <laughs> ability. Action. It costs one, and I put a counter on it. Once per turn, I can use that counter to remove a steam... I can remove a steam counter to target a pistol that gains go again. Okay. So then I'll use a second resource to load my gun. Easy. Te Teclo plasma pistol, action, resource with no steam counters on it, put a steam counter on it, go again. And it has go again. So I'll use a th third action to actually use the gun. Remove a steam counter from techno plasma pistol, attack. Take care, Taylor. You have a two damage attack coming at you. Two damage attack. Well, as it just so happens, have I got news for you? Okay, so what am I going to do? I'm going to do this. Oh, I did this thing. This. Turn attack reaction. Oh, I don't do it yet. Oh, it's an attack reaction. Yeah. That makes it better, actually. See you, Taylor. Did you already say that? Yep. <laughs> I'm in the zone, man. Auto zone. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, and so you can do it again, potentially, is the, the, the thing. There. That is the thing. And there's no effects attached to this? Just two damage. Just two damage. Mm -hmm. Just two damage. All right, I'll take two. Hmm, you got okay. a reaction to that? You want to do nope, the thing? I'm just doing two. Okay. I'm not falling for that garbage. Hmm. Oh, wait, I have a reaction to this thing. My reaction. Yeah, go again. I get what you're saying now. <laughs> I'm, I'm hip and with it. All right, let's pay a one cost uh, zipper hit red. It says, boost additional cost to play Zipper Hit. I can banish the top card of my deck. If it's a Mechanologist card, Zipper Hit gains go again. Somebody said it ends your turn. What ends your turn? Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Before you had done the yeah. thing. I'll banish the top card of my deck. Yeah. Which is, a co of course, a Mechanologist card. It's a Mechanologist card. card. Interesting. I'm going to put it over here. Uh, so it gains go again. All right. So a five cost go again attack. Okay. Um... I'll defend with a two. All right, I have no reaction. No reactions. Take, take three. Take three. Man, Dash is crazy. <laughs> she cray. Uh, okay, then. But you gotta like steam stuff now, right? Well, I'm gonna use this action on the tech, Teclo plasma pistol to load it again. Mm -hmm. Go again. Uh, and I have two resources left. So then I'll play red overloop. If it hits, I put it on the bottom of my deck. It has boost as well, so I'll spend two on it. So five attack, I'll banish the top card, it gains go again. Interesting. Okay. Um, 
Well, I don't want to take all this damage. I guess uh, I will, though. <laughs> what is happening? This is crazy. I'll take five. All right. It hits, so it goes to the bottom of my deck. Mm -hmm. And then last action, I'll fire my gun. Two coming at you. You got me. Your turn. All right. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I forgot I get to draw at the end of this turn. Yeah. I'm the first player. So I'll at least block that one for two. OK. And then draw back up. So I'll You're you welcome to block however much you want. Yeah, that's fine. I want to play these cards. All right, then we both draw up. That's important. OK. Very cool. Then it's over to me, eh? Indeed. OK. Plus two, create a run chant token. Two, three. Mm-hmm. OK. How weird. Action, yeah, this makes sense. OK, let's start by playing Oath of the Ark Knight. It's going to cost me two. I'm going to pitch Pummel to generate three. So I've got one floating. And it says my next turn blade attack is plus two. I get to create a token. This is yellow Oath of the Ark Knight? Yeah, Oath of the Ark Knight yellow. Create a Renchant token. I'm doing that now. And then it says go again. So I will do so. OK. Then it is a non-attack action card. So my uh, Viscerae ability, when I play a Rune Blade card, if I've played another non-attack action card, I create a Rune Chant token. So then, you see my health. I'll pay one for Blood Spill Invocation. Uh, it has go again. It's going to generate a Rune Chant token because I've already played a non-attack action card this turn. Mm. And this is a Rune Blade card. So you're just going to put your counter on top to show how many you yeah. have. Great. And then it says, when I attack action card I, uh, hits, I can destroy it to create two run chant tokens. OK. And it's going to go in as an aura. And then I'll end with read the ruins. It's going to generate one because of Viscerae's ability. And then it's going to generate three for the ability itself. All right. It's my turn. All right. So all your threes are free now. Plus, they do six extra. Threes are free. All right. Interesting. Yeah, I think it does, Jonathan. I think it's gonna make. I think it's gonna make sense um, to have some defense reactions and whatnot in here, ultimately. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, I can block these. Insane. 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 OK. Let's just do this. <laughs> this is not Dude, Blitz is fast. It is, it Blitz is really is fast. insane. All right, let's play Yellow Locked and Loaded. It's free. The next Mechanologist attack action card I play gets plus two. If I've boosted this turn, which I haven't, it's opt one, but it does again go again, so it's going to be a plus two. And then I will play I think <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll play a yellow throttle discard in here. So it's doing seven, and it's got boost, uh, and if I successfully boost, I'm going to get to go again. So I'll boost, flip. Oh, look, it's a Mechanologist card. Go again. Oh, look. Let's see. The next attack, non-attack. Let's go again. Destroy the next attack action card, next attack action card, etc. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. Mm. 
Well, I I get it. I think I get it here. Uh, so that would go again. Okay, I'm on it. I'm on it. Uh, no defense. Do you have any attack reactions? No. Do you? Reduce to rune chant defensive reaction. It costs zero because it's reduced. It's a yellow reduce to rune chant. Create a rune chant token. Mm. And then I'll take, what is it? Seven minus three. Mm -hmm. So take four. Yep. One, two, three, four. And then this goes away. Okay. When that I took damage. When that hits, I'll destroy Vest of the First Fist. When attack action card you control hits, I can destroy it to gain two resources. And then, for my next trick, um, let me do the math. I'm going to load my induction chamber with a token. And then I'm going to pay one for an Aether Sync. It comes into play oh, with that's handy. It comes into play with a steam counter on it, yellow aether sink. Action, I can spend a resource if there are no steam counters on it, I can put one on it, go again. Instant, remove a steam counter from it, I gain arcane barrier two. Okay. Which you might Which I mean it's only gonna be one damage pocket, so it's fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know. I think you can spend up to two. I don't think you have to spend two resources to block. Yeah. Like, well, I have Arcane Barrier 1 on each of these. Yeah. So, so that's that, an irrelevant card. It's all irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah, that's good to know. Actually, just having one of these is enough. Just having the Achilles Accelerator would be enough to, Got you. to blast. So, um, yeah, that's fine. A much better play would have been using it as a resource. Yeah. I, get it. I get it now. I was thinking, like, if you did seven, I had to be able to block as much of it as I could, but that's cool. Okay, why don't we do this then? Let's go for it. Let's get a big swing and see what it feels like. Um, I'm going to start with an action destroying Goliath Gauntlet. The ne atta next attack action with cost two or greater is plus two and go again. Okay. So let's go plus two here. Boom. Goliath Gauntlet in the pile. Then we'll play a red lead the charge for free. Next time I play an action card with cost zero or greater, it gains one act I gain one action point. And go again. And that satisfied my non-attack action card for Viseria's ability. Then we will play Amplify the Arc Knight. And that's going to trigger some things. Um, it costs me nothing because I'm minus, three, minus seven to its cost at this point. So eight damage, and before this resolves, because I just played an attack action card, two things are going to go on the stack. One is creating a run chant token, but more specifically the other one is when you play an attack action card, destroy run chant and deal one. Now here's an interesting thing. So I have two triggers lining up here. This says when you play an attack action card. This says when you play a ruin blade card. Both, this one says create a run chant token. This one says destroy run chant and deal one. I think we looked at it, and if you add a run chant token right now, it has missed its chance to trigger, so yeah. it cannot trigger. So basically, the this text on run chant says it's responding, but it isn't in play to respond to it. So only these seven could hit. Right on. OK, so we're just going to let that fly. Run chant's going to come in. So these seven damage, uh, seven pockets of arcane damage are going to resolve one at a time. So you can discard up to seven cards, or up to seven resources, to make it happen. I will, and then you have an eight coming in mm -hmm. after that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the idea. Oh, sweet Caroline. Sweet Caroline. Where's that? Uh, I'll pay four to cancel four of them. Okay. And those are resources, so they'll go on bottom. And then I take three. Mm -hmm. And then the one comes in for this raise ability. And then you go to uh, defense cards. Eight swings, swing. Uh, I'll block with a three. Okay. 
Any attack, or I don't have any attack reactions. You got any reactions, anything? Nope. All right, eight take five. Take five. Take five. Boop, boop, boop. That's actually really good. Uh, and because I believe the charge, this has go again. I'll go ahead and discard it. Technically, I, I wouldn't. Um, so then we'll discard the blue pummel t to do the nebula blade to uh, swing attack. And it is an attack uh, with a weapon, so this is going to pop. So one arcane damage coming at you. Taking that. And then one damage, and if it hits, I will get a run chant token. Oh, one damage. I have played in a, a non-action uh, card, so it's actually a four. I'll take four. Take four. Rune blade coming back in. This is crazy. <laughs> it's blitzy, isn't it? It is very blitzy. <laughs> All right, mine? Yep. Oh, technically, I'm going to throw my gauntlet in there and take one less. Yeah, that's fine. Because you were playing the card. Totally, totally the right call. All right, let's use my Teclo Plasma. Let's load it with one. I have one remaining. Here come the pistols. I'll Thomas use... Morris said we played it right. Good job. Thank you, Thomas. Nice. I'll use the induction... Thomas Morton. Induction chamber. Um... <laughs> Remove a steam counter once per turn. Give the p pistol go again. I'll remove the token, and pistol will hit you for two. Just two, eh? Mm-hmm. It's just so hard to block those. Mm-hmm. All right, so next turn. <laughs> That's the game right there. <laughs> You can't, I mean, I just can't get down to the, the business here. Gross. I'll take two. Okay. And has it go again? Do you have any reactions? Yes. I, I already did that on accident. <laughs> <laughs> I already spent it. So it gets go again. Uh, then I'll spend one more to load the pistol. Mm -hmm. And then I'll use the pistol last time for two. We Caroline. Ba, ba, ba. Well, this is just the question, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Okay. Two less on that. Okay. So, technically, yeah, we could do that. Technically, yeah, we could do that. All right, let's uh, no defenses, and then I got a reaction. Blocking for four, but it is going to make a rune chant token with reduced to rune chant red. Does that cost you anything to play? It's minus one for one rune chant token, so it is free. You got it. Do your worst. You got it. Bum, bum, bum. Hmm. Well, 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 well. Tempo, tempo, tempo. Tempo tongo. Okay. Attack action cards. So I'm going to play Become the Arc Knight. Oh, boy. Uh, What's it do? So I can discard basically an attack action or a non-attack action and go get any of those and put it in my hand. So let's discard Oath of the Arc. I don't know if I'll ever get over this art, which is a non-attack action. And let's go get any non-attack action that I want. Mm -mm -mm. It's real good. Yeah, those things are good, but they drive me insane because, you know, I just don't know what to do with it. <laughs> what? What have you become? <laughs> what have you become? <laughs> Jeremiah saying, epic art. Yeah, it totally is. What is today? Tuesday? <sighs> Been a long year. Is it discard attack, get non-attack? Is that how it is? 
Discard non-attack for attack. OK, so it's the opposite of what I was trying to do. So if we discarded Oath, yeah, we'll go get an attack. That's fine. So basically, now I need just a zero cost attack. So good, so good, so good. Maybe I get. Maybe now's the time to get that uh, slogism. Huh. I'll just say this. I don't feel safe with you sitting at me at only eight health. Yeah, I feel that. Five four. Hmm. Okay. I, I agree, Jeremiah. He says Fab Foilin is the jam, best in class. I, I tend to agree with you. Spellblade Assault, maybe. Okay, I might do I might do the attacky to non attacky thing too. Let's see how that ends up. So I could discard Spellblade or I could discard Oath of the Art Knight. Their opposite sees is weird. That makes me feel awkward. You're trans transforming. So that's what I'm gonna. I'm just what I'm gonna do then. I think I'll drop. I don't know. I'm trying to build up. I'm trying to build up these attacks. So I've got to get an attack action. Hmm. It's a cool card. Okay, so then that will get rid of all of those cards. Well, well, well. Huh. The game is fascinating. Isn't that something? I really, what I need is a two cost minus the cost for each, uh, for each thing that I've got. Two ruin chant tokens. Huh. And I don't have any. This is actually really, really interesting. I wonder if I, did I play them all already? Amplify the Arc Knight is a three. OK, so I see how it's balanced, basically. You really need three Ruin Chant tokens to get into it. Um, and I don't think I have any way to make those things happen. So I'm trying to think of like what I actually want, and there's not a lot. You'll get a third one the next time you play a... Uh... Yeah, it'll happen, but at that point, the cost won't be reduced by the thing that uh, it brings in, you know? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Plus three, create a run chant token. So I guess Oath plus Amplify maybe is right. Two less to play, go again. I could just straight up, maybe I just go get, I'll just go get the... Uh, the money that I need, like a yellow attack or something, if I've got one. So good. Don't you love tutoring in games? <laughs> when you know what you're doing, it's nice. It's really nice when you know what you're doing. Um, I mean, it's interesting, though, because like you're giving up a card that's a three resource to do it. I know, right? So it's like. So it's only so good. I think it's just him trying to set up a very specific combo of pieces. Mm-hmm. I mean, I may as well just keep that whole thing then. Is huh. that your hand right there? This? Nope, down there. Oh, I just failed on my pitch stuff. But uh, <laughs> it, it shuffles, I guess, anyway. So this is my hand, yeah. So rather than ditching this to replace one of these, I just use this as money, cast this, and use the cross strap. And then I'm going to get more out of that than I would anything else. Yeah. Which is but awkward. It's got to be a very specific interaction for you to need to go search for a card and get rid of a three resource. OK, so then let's do Oath of the Art Knight Blue. It's two cost, non-action uh, attack. I've got to generate money for that. I'll pitch that. Hold on to one resource. OK. Next attack is plus one and create a rune chant token. And then go again. Whoosh. Whoosh. And then we will. Destroy heart and cross strap. <laughs> hey, Frankie says, the real question, though, Tony Zero's merch, when is it coming? <laughs> All 
All right, so we talked about it. We did talk about it. Here's a five damage attack coming at you before it resolves. We've got two Ruin Chant tokens coming in, in the queue, and then these three are going to trigger. So th three instances of one damage. Well, that's no fun. Pay one, prevent one, play two, All prevent right. two. I'm going to pay three, two. prevent three. Easy. All right, and then two comes in. And then this is a four. A five damage attack due to the buff from Oath of the Arc Knight, and then plus one because I had played a non attack action card on the run chant token. So I'm back up to three. Mm. Mm -mm. Bam, bam, bam. Actually, I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to pay two and take one from those rune chant tokens. Okay. And then for my next trick, <laughs> uh, I'll block for three. Okay. Take two. Take two. Nailed and it. I've got one left, which I can't do anything with, so I have failed at the task that is given to me. My turn? It's yours. Mine? All right, uh, let's fuel up. Let's load the gun. <laughs> let's load the induction chamber. Fuel up. Let's fire the gun. For two? For two. <laughs> pow, pow. Pow, pow, power wheels. Um, I'll block for two. OK. Rejected. <laughs> I'll use my next resource to load the gun again. Come back to the party. Let's send it in. I assume you're doing the reactions or yeah, whatever. Yeah. To I, I made all that happen. Uh, I have no defense. Take two, scum. Oh, look at Dash go. Yeah. I, I'm basically just, I, the, I drew too many items in that hand. Uh, so, so, yeah, sometimes that happens. I've got some weird mixes. I didn't have defense cards, and I also didn't have attacks. OK, so if we do this. We need to generate all the money. <laughs> Dash did shoot first. Destroy run chant, deal one arcane. So that's keeping pressure in your hand, which is hilarious to me. It's been very annoying. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. OK, so we go to four, seven. Boy, you just, you just need cards. Oh my gosh. Three cards is nothing. Yeah, if you block anything, you're just on us. But that's where you got to use the arsenal, right? I got to find the arsenal, the arsenal right? man. Yeah, you got to take a downturn. Just but if you take a downturn, you're not pressuring me. I might me. die if I take a downturn. Yeah, I know. It last turn would have been the turn to take a downturn. By the way, I not you didn't know it, but like my hand, you I was like, nothing, man, if he yeah. just does nothing, it's going to be a bummer. Scrambled for me. eggs over there. I do like scrambled eggs. Eat them every day. <laughs> every day. All right, I got your downturn right here, buddy. Downturn. <laughs> one. I just want to open these booster three. packs. You ever feel that way? I do sometimes feel that way. It's like the one ring over there call my name. Zach. 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 All right, so let's go here. Oath of the Ark Knight Red. Uh -huh. Generate three resources, so I'm going to carry one. Next rune blade is plus three, and I get to create a rune chant token. This is for you. Joke's on you. There will not be another Rune Blade attack. You just wanted a token. Uh, then uh, we got go again. So we'll take an action, spin that last resource, destroy this, put an attack mm. action and non-attack action on top of my deck. What's the name of that card? Yard. This is called the Crown of Dichotomy. Put it on a play mat. Sell it to me. OK, so I need an attack and a non-attack. This is going to go into my arsenal. Uh, So here's my attack. Here's my non-attack. Luke says, I'm feeling a booster pack opening after this game. Yeah, you guys know it's happening. <laughs> I'm going to try to finish you off here. OK. Done. This goes That's on good. That's a good good thing you're doing. You're, set, you're queuing up for the big turn. Queuing you're you basically up. saying, it's now or never, it's Dash. It's now or never, Dash. You better take some cards out of my hand, or this game is over. Or perhaps not. Ready? Yeah. 
we're going to load the pistol with the blue cognition nodes. Good luck proving it. And then we're going to load this thing. Then we're going to fire the pistol. You got Fires two, a pistol. Two coming at you. Block two. OK. I'll Never give it for that card anyway. I'll give it go again. OK. Just keep you honest. If you miss here, it's bad. It's game over. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's game over. Or perhaps it's not. All right, let's do this. <laughs> I'm going to play a yellow throttle. Cost me two. So one here. I'll generate three more. One card left. One card left. And I know you got a two damage attack coming in. Uh huh. Five. Red throttle coming at you. Throw the cards down. <laughs> I have to. Um. <clears throat> well, this is annoying. Mm. Okay. George is saying, Stephen playing mind games. I'm immune to his mind games. We've yeah, been around each other way too long. <laughs> I don't know, block with three. Oh, I have to boost, by the way. I'm definitely boosting. <laughs> but yes. Block with three, take two. Take two. All right. Now is the moment of glory. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> I'm going to pay two for a red overloop. If it hits, put it on the bottom of my deck, boost. I won't boost because you got me a thousand I'm ways. Out of resources. Block with two. Oh, or block with five. Doesn't matter. Got him. Two, Wait, two from what? the pistols coming in. No, I can't use the pistols. You can't. They don't have go again? They do. I just don't have the resources to use them again. Mm. So you can block it if you d ditch all your cards. Uh, I can block the three then and take two and die. So yeah. So the all the cards are gone. Consider it blocked. I don't see a world, though, where I'm going to be able to defend all of the two damage nonsense that's coming my way. Well, you can survive and see. Maybe I don't. Keep trying. I mean, like, I have to be able to do it all in a turn like that. Could keep trying. So I'm just going to pass and draw my cards. OK. Back to you. Back attack. Look who's back. Back again. Oh my goodness. What is happening? Okay. Ready? Ready. Let's see if you're capable. Red, locked and loaded. Next attack is plus three. Probably not capable. <laughs> um, we're going to use a zipper hit, generating three. I have two left. I'll uh, boost. It hits. Uh, it gets go again. Swinging for seven. So should I expect two inches of two? I don't know how the pistols work. Uh, yes. OK. I can basically do it twice. OK. But I have to be able to, I can pay for the two here already. Mm-hmm. And then I have to have at least a one here to be able to do another pistol. Likelihood is 100%. <laughs> uh, somewhere in that realm, yeah. Uh, OK, block for six. Take one. Mm, nice. <laughs> All right, let's l go and load these two. Use the pistol. Block it for two. Give it, go again. Block it for two. Go again. <laughs> we did it. Look at that. Pass my turn. <laughs> Eventually draw all reds or something, right? That's the goal, I think. I think that's what needs to happen. No boosties. No boosties. All right. Let's do this. We're going to do pedal to the metal. Uh, if it hits, my next attack gains dominate. It's a five. It's a red pedal to the metal. Red pedal to the metal. Okay. If it hits, what? So you're at a five right now, yeah? 
Phoenix says, I have no idea how to play this game, but I'm here for Team Covenant. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Absolutely awesome. Brad says, and this is when Steven realizes Dash is ridiculous. Uh, block for five. Okay. It didn't hit. No, it didn't. So no, no dominate for me. Uh, then we're going to play... Let's go ahead and load the pistol. We'll load the induction chamber. Use the pistol. Block for two. Give it go again. Did it. Let's... Oh no, my math is wrong. <laughs> Pay two for overloop yellow. That's a four. You did it. Got a three. Just All right, squeaked so Dash it is in. Good. I get it. That's just really good. She's particularly good when you know every card's a mechanologist, first off. I also feel like I got bogged down. I don't need this Aether Sync at all. Yeah, I know. That's a complete waste of time. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and make the changes. So there's definitely a big swing there uh, for Ruin Blade. I it's feel like. It's very tedious to play this. Because like you have to, you know, you're adding <laughs> run chant tokens, you're using them, you're taking them away, then you're adding more, and then you got to remember non attack actions generate one, non attack actions give you plus three on the blade, etc. This is not the kind of deck that I would play. There's a lot of moving parts. I feel like all the Arcane Rising stuff is very moving parts. Lots of stuff going on. Yeah. Like Dash is the same, like just taking your word for basically. Um, What's going on? What's going on, right? It's like, okay, so this gives it go again, and this does that thing, and induction chamber, etc. Do yeah. it again? Should we do it again? Oh, we can play it again. Yeah. Then we can open some packs. Yeah. Let's play one more. Give me, I'm going to make changes. We'll take a look. It's in a book. For reading. What I should do is just defend the whole time until you run out of deck. Because your boost should run you out of deck twice as fast as me, right? Not quite twice, but that kind of an idea. So the way to beat Dash, maybe, are we supposed to stall it out? Because it's it seems like it's like a it's like a you know. But then again, the Dash control stuff in Constructed is all the defense. Pockets of two damage. What do you do against that? I guess that's the Katsu question, too. Maybe Katsu's just less good at it. This has got to go. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. know. Uh, Michael, unfortunately, so the crown costs one, the weapon attack costs two. So I only had one, uh, I only had one resource left over, so I couldn't have done a uh, weapon attack. Yeah, Blake, that's that's my question. How do you defend against that much little plinkies that doesn't come from your hand is the best question. That's a good question. Ryan says it looks like uh, there will probably be cards that deal with items like induction chamber, which would I have sense. heard that. Yeah. That would make sense. Dash has been doing pretty good in Constructed, right? Isn't that like the, the deck right now? I think it's apparently very good. Take a look. Oddsies, evensies? Yeah. Even Steven, here we go. Sure. Okay. So we can do Otta. Go again. I also feel like you weren't exactly that far off there. Hmm. Nope. Kind of one attack, one big attack. If I could have got those rune yeah. tokens to pop, that's that. The two damage on the weapon attack is the problem. Also, maybe if there was a playable card. I think at that point I needed a free attack in my arsenal. That mm. was the key. All right. OK, so if we do this. OK, so if we do this, OK, 
card, you control his. And this. Okay. So that's going to cost me one, two, three. Okay. So I can get, let's see, what would I get? A rune chant token here for two. That would then get me another token. So that would cost me three total. Ah, I'm one short. I hate being one short. It's so annoying. Run them orange cards. Run those orange cards already. Well, purple, four resources. So non-attack action card, and then ruin blade cards is what I'm looking for. OK, we'll just do the old-fashioned way. Let's start with the old blood spill invocation. Yeah. And we're going to generate three resources to do that. So we'll float two. The non-tag action card has to go again. And then if I take damage, it's going to go away. Um, then we will do blue Oath of the Arc Knight for two. Next rune blade attack is plus one. It creates a rune chant token. And because it's a, uh, I've already played a non-attack action card, it's a rune blade card, so it generates another one. So it just generates two for me and has go again. Nice. And then, mm. you need one more to swing the weapon. Yeah, but I'm not, I just don't think you do. I think you just hold on. Arsenal, what up? I think you basically just hold on. Um, I like it. You don't let me filter my cards. Yeah, arsenal that, and then draw up. All right, mine skis. Yeah, let's get it going. I'm gonna play a red overloop, floating one resource. It's a five. I'm gonna boost it. It's a mechanologist card. Oh my gosh! You don't say. So five, huh? Yep, five coming at you with a go again. Okay, and then I presume. You're going to hit me with more of those things. <laughs> pow, 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 power wheels. OK, so my game is basically how many. That's a bummer, Phoenix, saying, I ordered some Keyforge X the other night, just got them in and found out they're Age of Ascension instead of Worlds oh, Collide. Gross. That's, that's a bummer. Tears. Playing Keyforge tomorrow on stream. That'll be fun. A little more uh, mask mutation. Hoping to get some of them big old dinosaur combiner <laughs> cards. Big old dinosaur brains there. Got a dinosaur and a gorilla ape, a King Kong. Okay. Well, you know what we're going to do? Let's block with five. You got it. It misses, so it goes away. That's right. It's gone forever. OK, uh, then I will load my induction chamber. We will generate resources. I have one floating. I'll load my gun. <laughs> pow, pow. Fire my gun. You got me. Two, give it go again. Pow. I'll load it again. I'll fire the gun for you two. You got me. And then Quit shooting. <laughs> I'll put this face down. OK. And we were shooting. First time I played Arsenal with the uh, old Dash Aroni. Dash Aroni. All right, so I'm going to start. Oh, and I took damage. This I time. do feel like I'm starting to see the game a little bit better. Differently. Start with Red Mordred Tide. End mm -hmm. of turn, create a rune chant, create an additional rune chant. And then we're going to play Read the Ruins, creating two rune chant tokens, which is going to be three. And then also creating one additional for Vistra's ability, which is an additional because of Mordred Tide, so it goes up to seven. Gemini Christmas tree. Pass into you. I better get ready. Yeah, we're just going to try this strategy instead. Huh? OK. All right, well, let's get rolling. 
Like Philip. Philip. Yellow zipper hit. Cost me one. Floating two resources here. Uh, it's a four damage attack. I'm going to boost it. It gains go again. Okay. Black for four. Okay. Thanks for doing business. Yep. Uh, then I will load my gun. Load my induction chamber. Fire my gun. Black for two. Okay. Give it go again. I will load my gun. No, wrong. <laughs> I'll load my gun. Uh, you want to play that card in your hand. Huh? I'll load, load my induction chamber. And then I'll actually play a hybrid driver from my arsenal. Okay. Cost me one. It enters play with three steam counters on it. Red hyper driver. Once per turn, when I boost a card, I can remove a steam counter from it to gain a resource. Okay. Now, this is the question. <laughs> what up, Key Forger? Hmm. This is the question. So I can either. No, you can't do that. I'm just going to pass it. And draw three. All right, wild times. Yeah, we're trying a new strategy here. You just passed your turn because you defended. Mm -hmm. I got you. Yeah. All right. OK, this makes sense. Attack action, attack action. OK. Three. OK, I'm into it. I'm into it. What you got? I'm just reading. Chat? Yeah. Philip's saying, that's why a max out on induction chambers in Blitz works really well. You pitch to save resources and pew, 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 makes in an attack action card dealing at least five. Seems like about what you're doing. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay, so this, okay, this, this makes sense to me. What's your play? I don't know. <laughs> That's good. That's a start. I guess it's this. Uh, locked and loaded, red, next attack is plus three. Don't mind if I do. Don't mind if you do, man. <laughs> um, and then I will zipper kick red. It's an eight. Deal with them apples. Yeah. Yeah. It's an eight. Isn't it? It's such an eight. Okay, that's an action card. That's the thing. So plus two, minus two. Hey, how are you? Non attack action card gains go again. Eight coming in. Yeah, Blake and Jared, I, th I think one bundle with a starter deck is more than enough to build build good blitz decks. Block eight. Oh, man. Got him. <laughs> I can see how people would figure this out in Constructed. Yeah. That is the, okay, so the idea is just wait. Plasma pistol. You got me. Give it, go again. You got it. Load it. Go again. Sure, do you do it? Mm hmm. Uh, then I use a resource to load the induction chamber. And I'll save this in my hand. Okay. Passing it over. Oh, and when I boosted a card, I, I have to remove a steam counter to gain a resource, so then I'll load the gun again. We'll go ahead and drop it down. I might just need some more money, too. More money. Back to you. 
I see. You're just trying to get a 20 over here. <laughs> well, I'm basically digging for certain cards to try to put together the turn. The crazy turn. Yeah, so I need to, I, I have cards in here that build rune chant tokens. So mm -hmm. I basically can block with three and then drop one that actually generates one. Yeah. But the, they, they designed it in a way that it's hard to do because you, all of these abilities require you to do two things, like a play and on attack and yeah. then play something. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to be very careful all right. on how you do this. Well. And you also have to make money. That's the thing. Make the money. Ready? Yeah. Shoot the gun. Happiness is, is a, a warm drug. gun. Block for two. All right. Give it go again. Uh, let's go. Locked and loaded, plus three. Next attack. Zero to 60 is plus three red, so it's a seven damage attack. Okay. Um, and I'll boost it so it gains, go again. You have to use something with the hyperdrive when you boost? Uh, yeah, I gain a resource. Okay. Money. No defense cards. Okay. And then I will do two defensive reactions for seven. Okay. And it cost me nothing to do that, and I gained two tokens. Oh, Those were the mind. cards that I was really looking for. Okay, then I'll use this resource to load the gun. I'll use another resource to load here. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what four cards can do in it. And then I'll pass. Okay. It is amazing what four cards can do. <laughs> oh my my. Okay, I will pass as well. All right. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Ready to rumble? I think so. Shoot the gun. All right, let me just look at this for a second. You're good. Take your time. I feel like one of the tempo things that I figured out was ending a turn with a loaded gun and a loaded chamber. <laughs> You always end a turn with a loaded gun. Is way better. All right, so let's do that. That. To that. Although I may be playing that wrong. I think I was for a second. Because I, I basically, I can't. Yeah, I've been doing that wrong. You been doing it wrong? So Is this a reaction? So the, oh no, I haven't. <laughs> so the go again lasts for that attack. Mm -hmm. So I have to give it go again at, on its second attack in mm -hmm. order to be able to reload them. But I have been doing that. Okay. Because I start with them loaded and then I use them and then I do it again. I won't block. Two damage. Give it go again. And then... Let's generate three to play for my arsenal. Zipper hit blue. Okay. Cost me one. It's doing three damage. I'll boost it to give it a go again. Hyperdrive. Yeah. Okay. It's just three. Yep. Okay. I'm into it. Um, no defense. Take three. Technically, it stays in the chain. Okay. I'm going to put those there. All right. Um, let's go zero to 60 blue. Boost it. Give it a go again. Two damage. Okay. Um, take it. Let's go red, zero to 60. Four damage. Boost it. Go again. And your pistols will go as well? I can do one more round of the pistols. Just one instance of two? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Destroy that. Destroy that. So if we did this, maybe this is worth considering. 
we go. Is it a four damage? Mm hmm. Blocking three, maybe. And then we do. Dash is quick. I see. Okay. Uh, block with a three. Okay. Take one? Yep. Okay, so I was doing it wrong. <laughs> Induction chamber, the give it go again is an attack reaction mm -hmm. that I can only do once. Oh, once per turn? The thing that gives it go again. So the last thing I do is this, and this can't be loaded going into the turn, basically. Okay. Unless, unless I don't do the second attack. I'm with it. Um, and then I have three resources, so we'll load. Load. Uh, and then I'll actually just play another convection amplifier. Okay. Initial with two, or not another, it's the first one. Initial with two. When it has none on it, it goes away. Action, I can remove a counter from it. The next attack I get, play this turn gains dominate. Ooh, that's good. That's very good. Can be, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have a big attack though. Okay, let's let's take a shot at this one. Um, let's start with slogism. Mm, mm, mm. Generate three, so that's gonna do that thing. So that's plus six. Wow. That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, then, so that's my non-attack action. Um, then we'll destroy this. Next card costs two or more is plus two. Um, okay, and then we'll play this. You have my attention. From the arsenal for free. And this is a red rune flash. Red rune flash. It's free. It's going to generate a rune chant token. Pray the ability. And the first thing we'll do is nine arcane damage. And then this will be four plus eight. Twelve? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. I see. I see. I'll save that. Well, I just need to weather this storm. You got to weather. Yeah. Uh, so I'll pay nine to cancel the arcane damage. Paying nine. Ooh, he had three blues in hand. So lucky. That is such garbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. How ridiculous. Because like last time I had the red yes, zero to um, sixty familiar. and the red yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How about twelve? Uh, I'm gonna throw in my gauntlet. <laughs> I'm gonna throw in this card for four. Okay. Take eight. Taking eight. Okay. Taking eight, he says. Now this is the this is the big question here. Um this is the big question. Do you And you got no cards, right? No cards, yeah. Okay. I have these loaded. Mm-hmm. So let's go ahead and swing with the Nebula Blade. Generate T resources. Got one left over. Mm -hmm. So this is a four damage attack. First Plus of all, pops. one arcane damage. Yep. Pops. And then and take then, four. Yep. And then I get one back for the Nebula Blade. All right. And then with this one, I'll pop the crown, put a non-attack, and an attack. From graveyard, I think? Yeah. Yeah. On top of your deck. Okay, so from graveyard. Pretty epic exchange, actually. Yeah. I would have liked you to have nothing but reds there. Or worse. Put her attack action and non attack action. Okay, let's look what that looks like. Attack action is probably. That was crazy. <laughs> I see how, I mean, that's it, right? You're just setting yeah. up to do the big old swing yeah. in a Ruski. And I feel like in a 40 health game, you just kind of need to do that twice. Yep. Probably. And then, let's see, non-attack action. Okay, so if we do that. Okay. Ooh, nice. 
Okay, I can I can get here actually. Attack. It cost me three. Okay. Let's see what happens here. And then I'll draw to you. My turn. Yours. Uh, let's fire the gun for two. Well, um, well, how many cards in here? None, right? None. So, like, probably the worst thing that could happen on this for you, if you give me the two, I could technically pop here for two resources, give mm -hmm. it a go again, load them both back up, and then shoot one more time. So basically two shots at two. Yeah, like if you stop the first one, then it stops both of them. Okay. So let's block for three then. Yeah. That makes sense. And then that will end my turn. <laughs> okay. I get it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Okay. Okay. Maybe they have go again. Oh, no, it didn't. It did not. So that's right, Jonah. So. So you couldn't use the I, skull? I couldn't have put these two on top. So they would be in a discard? And you would have this, this back? That's right. Yeah. And you, you would draw two more? And then I'd draw two more. OK. Very cool. And if you wanted to block with a different card given that, feel free. Yeah, let's see what we deal with here. What do we block with? We blocked with. Logs, Oath, Black Oath of the Ark Knight, yeah. Where did that go? You put it on the bottom of your deck on accident? No. I don't know, man. Things are disappearing. This is a weird, it's a you're, weird You're world. playing the Rune Man. It's kind I'm of just, dark I'm magic. I'm just going to leave That's it alone. Fine. It's right. confusing. Um, oh, it's right here. That's wrong. This is what it should be. OK. So then instead, would I have blocked with this? Yes, I would have. So we would have blocked here to generate a token. All right, cool. And this would be in hand. I'm going to scale you up to two. Thanks. OK, so then it's my turn. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, See you, Jared. Huh. Oh my gosh, how weird. Man, oh man, dude. Okay, so you're you have four cards? Mm-hmm. I can't afford to to wait. Like I can't reload at this point. Cause you're I'm four damage away at any moment, so Ah. <laughs> uh, and you know that like my next, this is the turn you have. Yeah, I know. Because like, it's not at all what I need. Next round, I'm going to start sending volleys at you, and you're going to have to be blocking like a G6. Mm hmm. You know, may, maybe this is right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so this is the, this is the play. OK, so let's do Oath through the Arc Knight, paying two and dropping this blue in here, the becoming the Arc Knight, of course. So I'm floating one. This is a non-attack action, so it satisfies my requirement. Next room blade attack is plus three. Nice. <laughs> That's cool. <It> creates, a, <laughs> <laughs> creates a run chat token. <laughs> I've got the magic in me. He's got the magic. Uh, OK. Then we swing with the ruin blade. It's a four because I played a non-attack action. It's a rune blade attack, so it's plus three. So this is a seven damage attack, and I drop one more to pay for it. And you have a plus three? Three arcane coming in to start, yeah. OK, I'll take the three. OK. And then this is a seven? Seven. I don't like it. Good. Yeah, I can't burn the chest on any of that, Brandon, unfortunately, because it's not attack action cards that I'm playing. Block for six. All right. Let's consider it blocked. 
I didn't like it. Take one. Uh, and that's popped. Take one. These pop, but I get one back because it hit. Yeah. All right. Mine skis? Yours. Yeah. One point, I will care about my pitch yeah, cards. We will eventually get there. We're oh just not gosh. there yet. I'm so ready to. I'm All right. So ready. I'm going to use the red convection amplifier. My next uh, attack action this turn gains dominate. Like the oven. Then I'm going to play a red throttle. So this is, I'm going to generate two resources. It's a six with dominate. It's garbage. Okay, so we're back at it. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> um, Blake, the uh, arcane token, or the rune blade tokens always hit. They As soon as you play the card, they trigger. They basically go into the queue, so that's the next thing to resolve. Oof. Um... Okay, hold on. Let me think about this next turn. So, what would that do? Okay, so that'd be true off. So that'd be <laughs> four, two, two. Okay, so we probably want to hold that. Next. Okay. So that's a net. Actually, hold on. There's some weird stuff here, man. Dang it. That's Good. I mean, it's not just straightforward. Okay. So then, so what you're saying is, let's say I block three, I go down to one. I've got to block every pistol shot from now on. You're out of hand. Yep. But if it hits, I get two free resources, which means I'm going to get a double pistol shot. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you just get one pistol shot. Otherwise, I get none pistol shots. No pistols. If I don't hit this one, I don't get no. I don't have any other resources. Oh. What a devastating. But it's dominate, so you only block one card. What a devastating reality. If you can, how do you, okay. I got a defense reaction. But doesn't that count from here? Oh, wait, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay, so we'll need to start with that. So no defense. I got a reaction here for three. Okay. Cost me uh, minus one, so it's fine. It'll generate a run uh, token, and then I'll take three. Okay. So when you take three, I'll trigger Vest of the First Fist to gain two resources. And then we'll use one of those to load the gun. We'll fire the gun. Fire the missiles. For deuces. OK. Hmm. What up, Key Forger? Saying TC question mark. I don't know what you're asking. Frank's yeah, print, yeah d it says you can't play any cards from hand right on Dominate. That's, I think that's the idea. And then so the reaction. If, if you had the reaction in your arsenal, you your, could send it in. Yeah, in your arsenal it would work. Lance says, my bundle's just cleared customs. Hype train's coming in. That's awesome. Frank says, hey, guys, just received my Ira Dex here in Germany today. Thanks so much for the fast delivery. Glad to hear you got that. So th there's been some struggles I've been seeing internationally because we're from Tulsa. One of the hubs is Chicago, and they've been hit really hard, especially USPS apparently. So people have been getting their orders cut up there. And it's kind of a rough situation because, like, because it's going international, the international people can't uh, basically deal with USPS. But then we reach out to them, and it's just kind of like, <laughs> you just got to wait. Uh, so glad to hear you guys are getting that. So you got two pistol shots coming in, right? Yep. How do I get ahead of this? Um, let's see. <sighs> and I'll have none cards. The cross strap, I'm going to have to draw into a cross strap reality here. That's just what's going to have to happen. You're going to block for one. I got one there. You know. What up, David? Good morning. Well, aren't you? Aren't you? Don't you wish it. <laughs> Don't. Oh, it's so devastating. Um, On the verge of greatness. Block with you. OK. I'll give it a go again. Mm -hmm. Then I will use a resource to load the gun. Then I'll use a resource to fire the gun. Fire the gun. I love these scraps that get down to these last like points of health. Block for three. You got it. End of my turn. 
Can you believe that 2020 Good morning, was, David. was the year that we got not just a pandemic and isolation and all that came along with that. We got Sky Terror and Flesh and Blood in the same year. Yeah, it's awesome. What a stuff. year. Uh, Olivia, why do we only offer USPS, not FedEx or UPS? Uh, they're way more expensive for very little benefit. Um, and it's way harder to diversify shipping across a business like that. Yeah, so like... Tons of waste. Obviously, in the U.S., most of our, our customers are from the U.S., and so uh, USPS is super accurate. Uh, we're in the middle of the country, so it takes one to two business days to get it to pretty much anywhere in the country, and it's also the most cost-effective. Um, and then, because that's most of our business, shipping, like Stephen said, through that lane, uh, having that other option, because you have pickup times and you have timelines when stuff has to be ready for pickup and drop-off and all that kind of stuff, so it just gets really complicated really quickly to serve a very small percentage of our, our customer base. But that's also why we're working on international uh, shipping in general, like being able to ship from a, from other countries. Um, more on that soon. We're, we're kind of going as fast as we can, but that's operating internationally is a, apparently a pretty big step for a business. Okay, I'm going to just generate three run chant tokens. Call right. it a day. Uh-oh. Going back over. So I, I need to do it now. Is what you're telling me. Maybe. That's how I feel. <laughs> yeah, I agree. To, we, we're ready. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go dominate. That is devastating. Yeah, you just got to do what? Yellow throttle for five. You got it. <laughs> that is See, that's the thing is like if you don't have dominate or something similar, you can't get it through. I mean, I could just stall that for a very long time. Because basically, I hit for five, you have to block it, and then I'll get two pistol shots. Well, it doesn't matter, right? So the hit for five, if it's dominate. Well, if I don't have dominate. Unless I have a five in my hand for yeah. some reason, which I can see why people play Ruin Blade as a stally thing where you might yeah. add defense reactions and go for it. Because you just have to buy time with him. Well, dash is just too much pressure. So there's got to be, a, you've got to figure out how to fight that in a meta where, now, I mean, I feel like I was fine. If you don't have those three blue cards, it's probably over. Because <laughs> you end up at three health there. But then you just start pitching cards, but then, you know, I feel like I'm in a good spot. He's actually a good late game if I can get on the advantage. It's very similar, because it's like one instance of arcane damage. It's like, yeah. oh, I gotta drop a card for that, yeah? Well, and like, you, both games, it was like, you have enough to make it a problem for me, mm -hmm. but I had the tempo moment where it's like, I'm basically making you defend with cards, and then you don't have, like, I felt one turn ahead of you the whole time. Yeah, so like the big swing would have been the cat. It really was a catch up moment. Um, but the problem is, where do you go from there? So now I have to rebuild all those rune chant tokens. Yeah. And I don't have the ability to do that with one card in my hand over and over and over yeah, again. Yeah, that's the trick. So you need you need all three of the defense reactions that give you uh, tokens. That's necessary. I think I had. I think we put all the ones in that we had. Mm. But you've got to run three. Um, reduced to run chant. Absolutely necessary, because as you're defending, you're also able to start to build your offense. And I think that's really, really important. Yeah, and I think this is where you start getting into like a, ne a new layer, because like, even understanding, I would be curious to look through the cards uh, after I open some packs, um, which is basically like, uh, what cards could give you that in game? I think you're saying it right there with the you gotta have defense blue. reactions you gotta with have the, the blue ones. Yeah. The token. I think it's that stack closer to you. Yeah, that's right. So these are really important. Sorry to hear that, Phoenix. 2020 been rough. Yeah, it's it's awful. Evan asking, what would you sideboard to counter dash? Well, so the first thing I'm gonna do just in general, I think, is all all defense reactions like this that can give you Run chant tokens is super important, and it's particularly in this matchup it, where if you, you can build on your off turns, is the, you need the to trick. be able to build while you're defending, and that's so that's necessary. So blue reduced run chance got to go in. Um, if I could have gotten a turn, if I could have gotten a turn with what I was trying to set up was one regurgitating slog. 
with getting the Slogism out of deck. So you can grab that with Chronum Dichotomy, right? So you can you can put a Regurgitating Slog and something else on the top, like something to pay for it. Mm -hmm. You can discard the Heart and Cross Strap to play this for free. It's a six six damage Dominate card. So like if you, what I was mm. wanting to do, if you can get a twelve Dominate, that's insanity. Well, Slogism is just going to get because mm. I don't I can't afford that probably because you got to think I'm coming in with like one or two cards. So at its worst, I block with three cards, have a regurgitating slog as my play with the cross strap, and that's a six damage dominate. So you're on three. So if you don't have a four damage block, which I didn't, they, so that could be the end of the game. If you can squeak out an oath of the arc knight, now you get to play this. It's that's a room. Well, and I definitely can't with these five tokens sitting here. Right. So like this with the tokens yeah. should be like oh, and, and we should be enough there. What, what was preventing you from doing that? So any turn where, so the choice that I made was on that last turn, it wouldn't have mattered anyway because you had the Dominate. But I played the card to give me three tokens instead of pitching it to do the one cost, destroy, and set, set the deck. Mm. Um, so that was a question of like, well, if I go to five run chant tokens and he can't finish me, then any attack is going to be very difficult to defend. Even got, swinging the sword is probably going to be Even just swinging the tough. sword, and that's where, like, if I have a yellow or a blue at the end, I can at least just pitch that swing with the sword. Interesting. And then it's an option, yeah. right? So, but either way, so I got you on the turn that you could have made this choice instead. Well, there was, a, there was probably a number of... Uh, once the big swing happened, then you were out of cards, and then it was keep swinging to keep you low on cards. And then there was one turn where I tried to do this at the end of the turn. And you didn't. And I wasn't able to because I didn't have to go again. Uh -huh. So then it's like, well, your entire turn has to be this at that point. Because I was sitting on basically one card because yeah. I had to block everything. I... So I can pitch a card, set the top of the deck, and then my best bet is trying to go get and play that regurgitating slog at the very end. Which, which maybe was better, but at that time you were at like 7 or 8 health, yeah. I think. So... It was a bit different. Phoenix, the streams uh, usually start at 1 p.m. Central. Um, so, Sigil of Solace would be super solid here, 100%. Just heal. Well, and yeah, that's where it's like, a, so you're on one card, you get three extra hit points. That probably means that the next turn you don't have to block everything. So now you can end with two cards, which means that you can either put a combo together where you get the run chance or play the card for the Nebula Blade, or just having two cards where you can pitch one and pay for one. Mm -hmm. It's really important. So I would definitely throw, that's a good suggestion, Jonah, you definitely throw uh, Sigil of Solace in to give yourself that breathing room at the end. Very cool. Well, I uh, I get Dash. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. I assume in Constructed... You understand it, right? Yeah, you have less cards currently, but also, like, you're burning through your deck. So, like, any, any I think the... Outracing her or keeping pressure on her hand or also just la lasting a long time... It's like they're eventually going to burn through it. Like, there's like only... They have to burn in through the entire thing. But right? the thing is, there's only only so many of the mechanologist cards are attacks. Yeah. So, like, the thing I kept noticing is, like, every time I was burning, it was like, well, I, I have to start finishing this because, like, I'm running low on... On actual attacks. Actual attacks to yeah, do anything because you're with. pitching items and stuff early. Yeah. yeah. And that's a, that's a curious thing. I think you could technically outlast it, and it makes a lot of sense that you would run things like Sigil of Solace in a dash matchup where you're just taking time. Because I've got, literally, I've got this card that puts things from my graveyard. So as long as I can just wait, and then the only thing I have to do is crown a dichotomy and do a giant attack yeah. and end the game. And that's really what you're setting up for. That's what you Which should is why you have that crown of dichotomy. Yeah. Uh, one card that, I don't know if it's worth anything to you, but I'm thinking of like Sigil of Solace, I'm also thinking of like Life for a Life. It's just a one-cost attack that gets go again if you have less health, but it gives you a health. Yeah, yeah. Just give, just getting a health. Just yeah, buying yourself a little more health. Yeah. So it it does seem like, and again, this is like kind of a classic aggro thing, right? Dash feels very much like an aggro uh, hero. So you're not used to that level of pressure in the game. Used to like big, so we got big swing examples. So this is like viscera, at least this one. I think you could play it a little bit wide. I, I think that's probably worth doing. Because honestly, at a certain point, the difference between one arcane damage and three arcane damage is the same as the attacks, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I'm either pitching one card that's blue or one card that has a defense icon on it. And so it's the that's same difference the same for the tempo of the game. So I could see where you just play a normal attack deck, but it always has one on the side. 
Mm -hmm. And so, like, as long as it's got one on the side, you're always going to either getting, get one through or get an additional card out of hand. And that's a, that's a cool way to play it. I yeah. can see that being a thing. I definitely think. But I also, like, I feel like you're not far off here from the big Whopper attacks mm -hmm. either. Yeah, the Whopper attacks I, is how you kind that of... Crowned Dichotomy makes me see that in a whole new light. Because I was running it in draft just because it went with him. Yeah. But then, like, seeing you actually have Constructed where you're like, oh, I'm just going to go get my Dominate big attack. And I have the cross straps as well. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I can pay for it even with one card. Like, a six Dominate at the end is usually a game winner. Yeah. And there's probably a world where you grab the Regurgitating Slog, you throw it in your arsenal. Yep. And then you have drawn as your second card, like, your probably your red Slogism or your blue Slogism. It doesn't much matter. But so you've got your Slogism in there, and so then you go into the next turn, and basically you need to draw a blue card. And so hopefully you can just, you know, drop a blue, play this Slogism, pop the Heart and Cross Strap, play the Regurgitating for free, and now you're a 12 dominate attack at the end of the yeah. game. Which I you can guarantee really you have a blue with a crown. You can, yeah. You can guarantee it. Now, the question is, do you want to guarantee the Slogism red, which is going to be the buff, or do you want to guarantee just like the resources? Because like these two things go together, and then this has to be in play too. So it's really three cards that are working together. But if you have enough blue cards, you draw three, you should see, or you could string it together. If you don't have to block, you could also string it together. Yeah, but I mean like technically with the crown, you can put any t either two of these on top. You could put an attack and a non-attack. Yeah, this is a non attack. That's right? a reaction, technically. So, but any blue card would mm. work, right? So, whether it's. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. You know. So, that's interesting. But the thing is, like, getting all three of these. So, if you get these two, now I need to draw into a blue to play that combo. But that's where it's like, if I assume that, I'm going to have to spend that turn blocking, then throw this into the bottom. And then hopefully I, have, I was able to hold on to this one. And then I come into a turn where I can slugism, yeah. drop this, and then yeah, it almost is like blue card. you wait until one of these is already in your arsenal mm -hmm. to stack the top of your deck. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And you're just kind of waiting. Yeah, and you're gonna hit one of your second copies of this just to sit it there. Yeah, I think that's right, and I think that's for the crown. I mean, that's an incredibly important. Yeah, like the crown next to regurgitating slug. Getting a, getting a magic. dominate attack. Six man. attack dominate. I mean, that's huge. I mean, we saw the uh, the arc knight. The Arc Knight Majestic, uh, let me find the name of that, wherever that is. Arc Knight Ascendancy. I was super close to playing this because you can minus two from the, the cross strap and then you can play a yellow card to give you two resources. So you're, you're still and you have two uh, Ruin Blades. So one yellow card in hand, cross strap and two Ruin Chant tokens, you can play it. But the problem was it's a five cost with Dominate. And so it's like, that's not quite enough to end a game, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there's no way that I had the resources to play Slogism on that's, top of That's another tendency. really good card, because you had the moment earlier where it was like you had like the 9 or 10, mm -hmm. and it's like, and you boosted, and I blocked with two or three cards from hand off of, on that, not even on these tokens. I, I, there was a different... It, yeah, it was, um, it was the one that was in the arsenal, it was the one with Go Again. Yeah. And so that allowed me to go again into the blade attack, mm -hmm. um, which was two separate, so, so my thinking was like, even if he goes all out on this, it's like the attack will go through some, and then it'll be the surprise Nebula Blade for an extra four or five, which will gem generate a Rune yeah. Blade token, uh, and that'll keep the train going, basically. I, I feel like Sink Below is totally money in the stack. Yeah, because that's what uh, Joan is saying here. Because basically, it's a defense reaction, and all of it is just filtering into what you, like, mm -hmm. you're a filter deck. But really, isn't isn't so much of it it, and a lot of these heroes are trying to get dominate things to hit. I mean, like trying to buff them and hit them. And like, it seems like Reiner is doing it with Intimidate, like we talked about, stack Intimidate so they can't block. This deck is looking for dominate and or I think it can go wide with just little instances of arcane damage. And then Bravo is trying to go big with the big swings. Katsu and Dash are trying to just go wide. Attack, 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 attack. And Wizard, yeah, eh. Wizards are totally different. Well, Wizard, Wizard is to literally trying to play on your turn. Yeah. Like, that's how he sneaks through the damage at the end. So the damage is after you've played your offense, he has at least as strong or stronger of an offense he on has, your he turn. He has a moment after yeah. you've committed your cards where you just can't block it. Yeah. Um, and then who did we miss? Was there, what were the heroes that we didn't? Uh, Bravo. Oh, Azalea. 
I think Azalea still does the dominate. It's yeah. the user ability, but gain a bunch of dominate. I think that's what we were talking about, where it's like every hero has to have a way, once you get someone down to that one to four health, mm -hmm. to push it through. That's right. Because as long as you can draw four cards, you should expect them to block for 12. That's right. So like you either have to have attacks greater than 12, yeah. or you have to have enough attack, you have to have more than four attacks, or you have to have dominate. Right? That, that's the way. It, you either mm -hmm. have to boost past 12, wider than four attacks, or dominate yeah. to finish a game. Yeah. And that's just the beats. Or, yeah, yeah, wider than four attacks, particularly, I think the wide heroes do it best. And you see it, right? This is exactly how it works. Dash does it, but it has to be their weapons. They can't be spending cards to do those little attacks. Yeah. But Katsu's got the two blades, mm -hmm. right? So those are on deck. Yeah. And so you spend one card for two attacks on that, which is really nice. And then with the pistol, it's similar. You probably spend one card for two attacks. Yeah, and the, the, well, the best thing is when you go into the next turn with the, all that loaded. Mm -hmm. So then your first pistol attack is zero cards. And then your second pistol attack probably costs you a card, but you generate resources for something else. And then you probably play at least two other attacks. So like you can get them four cards out. Yeah, because Dash has the natural boost on top, or the natural go again on every attack that you're playing out of hand. Yeah. So you're able to go wide. But that, that's where like like what my opening on one of those games is like if you use a blue and you have a two and a one that have go again, it's like that's three cards for two attacks. And then your last card, you can do two pistol shots if it has the right resource mix. Mm -hmm. But that's still only four attacks. Yeah. So like D Dash can't quite go as wide as Katsu. And Katsu's combos are stacking up damage and effects rather than going just wide for a wide sake. Like Dash didn't seem to be doing that as much. Like the effects of hitting were yeah. not as significant. It rarely mattered. But with Ninja, when you've got you're going wide and poking around, but then you also have a big like combo moment. Yeah. Where as you're going wide, those attacks are getting like better and better, uh, which makes sense balanced against Dash, which is guaranteed go again every time that you play those attacks. So she's going to be more consistent. But I think Katsu is going to have bigger moments of like, oh my gosh, that combo just wrecked me. Yeah. Completely dominated. He can me. spike higher than she can. Yeah. She's a flatter curve, but ultimately she's going to hit the curve more often. And then Dorinthia is really interesting because Dorinthia is kind of trying to build to a, but it's not really building to a big swing because you're never going to have like seven tokens on that blade. Well, I think each faction has... It's the reprise thing is what she's doing. What's reprise thing? It's basically punishing you for blocking. Yeah. So that's her anti-block tech. She yeah. makes you not yeah. want to do it. Yeah, she, yeah. she also, like, Bravo as a guardian and her as a warrior, like Bravo has... Oh, like you're saying exactly what we're saying, Tor. Right on it. Yeah. Uh, Bravo has super good defense cards. That's what I realized. I didn't realize how good they were until I moved away from him. Guardian, right? So, like, Dash has threes. Mm hmm. But then, like, all threes. Bravo's like, ah, oh, here's a five or a seven yeah. out of hand as a reaction. It's like, what? Yeah, he has a ton. Like Stonewall yeah. Coffin, is that what that is? That's a lot. That's uh, a what is it called? Is it Stonewall? Stonewall. Is it the one where he's got his arms crossed and he's looking all bravado-y? I thought, I thought Stonewall was the like taverny looking. It's on the uh, screen right now. Is that the one you're thinking of? No, that gives your cards that cost three or more plus two defense. Mm. There's one that's just a five or a seven, and then like you can Un pay extra unmovable. That may be a neutral. Unmovable is the generic, yeah. So that's kind of cool. So you kind of you really start to have to look through these card pools and see what they're particularly good at doing. Obviously, that's the name of Constructed. Yeah. But you kind of start to see little differences in the card pools. And the fun thing is, like, those Guardian cards, that's going to be one of the feature sets of Guardian forever. Yes. Yeah. Naturally, they might have better defense cards. Staunch response red. Staunch response. Seven. That's yeah. it. Yeah, jo Joan had my back on that one. Oh, yeah, Dorinthia always, that's also what Warrior does, is all the attack reactions that boost it after the yeah. fact. Yeah, so... Which Guardian, Guardian has defense reactions, yeah. Warrior has attack reactions, mm -hmm. and then Ninja Katsu has the, the chain, combos, the yeah. combo chain. Yeah. Dash has the just wide attack quick. I think, I think Dash's thing is I'm always, I always have go again. I can play on my whole hand on offense. Yeah, and she can, so you have to pressure her, and or you have to dominate her. dominate item. Whew. But the attacks don't really get big, do they? She, seven she was has the biggest a, I saw? A five or a six, I don't have a seven. Well, like with a bonus, like plus three. Oh, yeah. I can get like an eight going, I think. I think I have a five natural. Man, this is insane. There's a six. Red Throttle's a six. So technically, she can get to a nine with Dominate with her card pool. But like 
Bravo has eight and nines natural. Yeah. Without running the boost cards. And he's got he's just got big stuff and you pay a lot of money to play him. Yeah. Which which is funny because it also makes him good against arcane damage. Particularly Runeblade. Because he got the money. He's got a lot of blue cards, right? Yeah. A lot of blue and yellow cards. What an insane game. I feel like I'm super close uh -huh. to like actually understanding it. Well, I feel like we're doing what you need to do, which is like we're playing through and building all the various heroes. Mm-hmm. And then at that point, we just get to jam games and make tweaks. But what, what we're learning, too, is like I, I start recognizing which neutral cards kind of start going with which heroes. Mm -hmm. Like even Regurgitating Slog, I looked at that as a um, Bravo player. Mm -hmm. And it was like two for six is okay, and I have a better way of getting Dominate. So like it didn't even make my pile. Right, right, right. And I would never have thought to put it in my Runeblade deck. Yeah. But you start seeing it, and it's like, oh, that is and really And all those Runeblade costs two or more, so it's like... Bravo probably wants to run Slogism, right? Do you run mm -hmm. Slogism in him? Obviously. But then maybe you don't run Regurgitating, whereas Runeblade brings these cards in. So it's like a really fascinating balance. Yeah, there's a lot. And then we're about to get set three, which is going to basically give us, for the first time, cards for all eight. Mm-hmm. Do we and know? Maybe weapons, are we getting new heroes? Gear? I don't know. There's, there's, there's been this weird preview image of a 20 health... Yeah, shapeshifter, and they also have been Legendary. posting on Twitter like just random like ah, oh, there's eight cards that do this kind of a thing. Yeah, um, it's gonna be weird. Like there's something weird brewing in Crucible War. I'm I'm hopeful that we get. Uh, from what I know, we're supposed to get a lot more slots. So, armor pieces, weapons. I hope we get new heroes. If we get more weapons, it's it's so yeah. interesting to me at that point. I'm telling you, man. Imagine if if what we got were one new hero for each class. <sighs> One new weapon for each class. One new weapon for each class is enough for me. Yeah. You have two different ways to run. Mm -hmm. Now, only if they don't make the mistake that Conquest did, that Warhammer Conquest did, which was we're giving you new ways to play this faction, but it's inherently kind of the same as the old one and just worse. Which was basically what all of the new heroes for Imperial Guard were. Yeah, in, uh, in it just got Conquest. worse. But I, I feel like <clears> we've seen that in so many games, like even Netrunner, where it's like, we're just going to give you a fundamentally solid runners up front. It's like Gabe and Kate. Yeah. And then it's like NHB. It's like, well, nothing's ever going to be as generically good as this and right. consistently good as this. Everything's just going to get weirder. Nathan's saying the new heroes are all young versions. Ira is one of them. Very cool. So Ryan's, young is specifically good for Blitz. Ryan's saying there's at least three new young heroes. Looks like Mech, Brute, as well as Ira. Generic weapons. Interesting. By the way, I didn't think about Generic this. Generic weapons is really interesting. Absolutely, because you can choose like a sword for Bravo instead of a hammer if you want. Um, oh, it's feeling like Bushido Blade by the moment. So one thing, I, I, next time we do this, you're obviously going to do Reiner. I'll do, I'll do, I'm actually not even going to do Katsu. You ready for this? No, I can do Katsu. Uh, no, I got a better solution. What's that? Instead of Katsu, I'm going to play Ira. Mm, well, we have Ira? She's or Ninja. Do we, do we already have it? Yeah, I have one uh, somewhere. Oh, yeah, we have it from the demo deck. Right there it is. She's a ninja. So what's the, her ability? My second attack each turn gets plus one. Oh. Fundamentals. So she can run the swords and the second sword attacks, a, or whatever it is. I'll, oh, that's I cool. Just think so that'll her be interesting. second sword is a yeah, two. And I'll definitely one. put in the scar for a scar, because it's got her on it. No, 100%. Let's just you'll, bring that you'll back be all, again. You'll be all flavor at that point. Yeah, we're just going in. I'm just going to look at this. before. I, I'm going to open booster packs in a second. Let's too. open that's them. On my list. Let's get into it. Look at this. I'm starting to conceptually understand the game. It's really, really nice. For anyone that missed it, now is the time. Grab a subscription. One of these with every box. <laughs> look at that. Every box. Look at this. Look at that. Would you look at that? Look at this foil, though. Just look at it. I Just love it. look at it. I'm excited. OK, I'm going to swap in some things here for me. And I'm going to drop these yellow lead the charges, I think. And it's funny because I'm tweaking these decks based on like playing as a one class. So eventually, it'll kind of even out as if we were to play a bunch of different yeah. types. Here's what I'm going to do. I could have taken those Iron Rot boots, I'll tell you, over those Mage Masters. They didn't do anything for you. They didn't do anything, man. I'm going to open three packs of each set. What would you like today? Uh, seven. Seven? No, I'll do three of each. That's fine. You can do whatever you want. Let's I keep can... it clean. And I gotta sort through all these open cards now. Let's keep it clean. All right, let's see if we can get an L or an F. Disarray. What I really want is 
If you put it in the universe, it'll never happen. That's not true. It's like Arkham. Some people think the opposite of that. <laughs> Evan says, someone's pulled a legendary today. He's calling it. Mm, I don't know. I don't think they exist. I, I haven't seen one. I've never seen one in the wild, so. I don't know what I want. Obviously, I think Kano and Bravo are my favorites, so those are those are top picks. This is a Arcane Rising pack. Moonwish. One day, man. One day we'll understand it. Uh, another Plunder Run. That's good. Yeah, we've been burning through those Plunder dude. Runs. Like I got crazy. that Foil Sun Sun Kiss. Always looks. I'm good. telling you, it's just we just need to start running them. Who runs Sun Kiss Moonwish the best? I might end up being a brute person. Everything is not rare or foil. You can put here. Not rare, not foil. Okay. So we get yellow staunch response, speaking of. And the old blue last ditch effort, which I saw earlier, which I'm really amazed by. Last ditch effort. That's a super rare, right? It is. It's the S. And I'll tell you, there's a there's a deck that's gonna do that. Steven, you're gonna be happy. First all arrows? No. I got a blue stir of the Aether ones. I think I was short one of those for my Kano deck, which is good. No, but I got one of your favorite cards in cold foil. Ooh, that Talismonic Lens looks good. <laughs> Let me take it. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, that So looks apparently so good. one of those comes in like every box or two. Those are not common. The Talismonics? No, the cold, cold foil and armor of oh, any the kind. the foil armor. Ooh, I just leave that out. That looks great on that. Got the old Awakening Bellow. Watch out. Brute coming at you. Another plunder run. Man, that whelming gust wave. See, oh, maybe maybe I should game. play ninja. I don't know. No Michael, else. Michael, that's that's actually really good. Um, so Kano can put Sunkiss on top with Moonwish, then use the instant power to play it as an instant to get an action point. Okay. Can you get like an that. action point on your opponent's turn? I don't know about all that. No way, right? You can't get an action point on your opponent's turn, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Look, dude, I got another timestamp potion. We need That's more. That's actually really important, yeah. A little foil stonewall confidence. Love Coming it. your way there. Drone of Brutality and a staunch Apparently response. you can't get an action point okay, on your good. opponent's turn. That so would break good. the game. That's very good. You're like, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Red Disable. And a glint. Glint the Quicksilver. And a foil. Come How on. Those cards beautiful. Give me an L. Yeah, Evan saying you opened two boxes, only got one of those Time Snap potions. They're good. Time Snap's good. The health potions are good. The Or the energy potions. What's a Seismic Surge token? Misprint? Hmm. <laughs> It's a guardian token, but I have no I haven't seen how you create such a token. Ooh, red sink below. That's actually a great uh potion strength given. Red sink below is important. Oh dude, look at that. Foil time snap potion. Oh my god. Get out of here. Woo! That's better than a, that's better than a, a legendary right there. <laughs> right there. Overpower and blackout kick. Maybe ninja geese get played. I'm gonna do some sorting. Ooh, here's a rare foil for Guardian, Blessing of Deliverance. That's a great foil. Bravo's Legendary is what makes the tectonic, the seismic surge. I want it. I want it. <laughs> I know you want it. I'm going to start sorting. Someone's, go back into someone's the... got to do it. Wow, look at you burn through those packs like a... 15 year old. I have made a few saga sets in my day. <laughs> One does not simply open packs. Where'd that foil time snap potion go? That thing it's in disappeared. My Put it in the pretty pile. <laughs> pretty bird. I know you want it. Hmm. I'm good at burning packs. Either spindle red. I needed that, actually. Pedal to the metal blue. Don't want you to have that. <laughs> Burn it. And the old pretty rune flash. Burn it, Charlie. Red zap. Z Man, how about that card? It's good. You just want to do some damage? 
Uh, I don't know about you guys. You just want to do some damage? You want to do some damage? Hey, kid. You want to do some damage? Nathan's saying, our pets' heads are falling off. Is it because of the noise? No, that's a dumb and dumber quote. Oh, okay. I was going to say, our pets' heads are falling off? <laughs> <laughs> You can't you can't slide a uh, Dumb and Dumber quote by Zach. I love that you love that movie so much. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, I do love it. It's a family thing, I think, honestly. Yeah, you're raised oh, on it, right? Well, it's a certain, I mean, kind of. I don't think it was par parentally. <laughs> it, it wasn't my parents trying to make that happen. Was it a secret, your secret pleasure? I think it was just our... Like my brothers and cousins, and we just wasn't, we watched it all the time. It wasn't like we were doing something hidden. It was just like they just weren't fully aware of what exactly was was on the. TV. There's some jokes I definitely didn't understand as a child that I do now, and it's like I cannot believe I was watching this. All right, so over the tip. Oh, here we go. Art of War, majestic here. Hey, that's a, a highly sought after card. Yellow. So there's only one version of Art of War, I think right? Because so, yeah. it's a majestic. Choose two action. Choose two. Ooh, I like choices. Oh my. <laughs> What's it do? That's super cool. I'm in suspense. What a great card is this. Uh, so you choose two. Now, if I say them all out loud, you'll never, you'll never digest them properly. So just read it. Oh, looky here. We also got a rare foil plunder run. Blue. Nice. Art of War, yellow. Choose two. Attack card, X card you control. Gain plus one attack, plus one defense this turn. It's an instant as well. Yes, important. The next attack action card you play this turn gains go again. Until end of turn, you may defend with attack action cards from Arsenal. You may banish an attack action card from your hand if you do draw two. You do two of those things. Hmm. The draw two, so you have to use this card and also banish. banish. And you got to pay for it. So that's that doesn't seem great. Uh, you could do it twice. So you could banish, play this with a resource, banish two, get a full new hand of four. Here's the other thing. Mm -hmm. You know, old, uh, ability there with the uh, with the head thing to put the two cards on top, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So then you play Art of War, you draw two, and now you literally just built you, your hand on the fly. On the fly. And now you can launch that slogism attack without even thinking about it. Seems a little gross. That's pretty good. I do think we already had an Art of War too, so technically we have deuces of that. We have two Art of War? Mm -hmm. I might put that in Rune Blade. Yeah, let me uh, figure this out. With that headpiece. Yeah, and you can't choose the same thing twice, that's true. Viscerate. Mmm. What a card, though. Look at that art. Art of War. Sunza. Sunza. Sunza what? <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> My mm. Eastern philosophy degree has prepared me for this humor. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. It's uh, similar to never put Descartes before Day Horse. <laughs> I was not ready. Oh, man. Those are the only jokes we had, though. The rest was very serious business. Evan's saying that Art of War needs a sleeve. What, what kind of value are we talking about here? It is a $7,000 card. Are you not aware? It's weird. Next week, we, we won't have that <laughs> card anymore. Boom. Sleeve it. I'm also going to sleeve this foil time snap. This I, seems really important. Honestly, just for like, and this is how it was as kids, too. Just for like, like literal deck building needs. Having as bunch of those potions so that we can just never so have to important. like not have g gimpy decks. Just give built. me twenty potions, please. Jonas said it's a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar card. I don't believe you. Actually, said thirty five. But a sleeve is only about what less than a cent, right? So well, it's probably a good. It's a good. Good investment. Mechanism. Olivia is saying we should double sleeve. Nope. Especially foils. I've never double sleeved in my life. I don't think I'm going to start. It would be. I mean, if I planned on doing anything besides keeping them, maybe. Like you're gonna sell them? Yeah, but I'm keep them in near mint. In M, get them graded. In M, get them graded. I mean, I get why people do it. I guess. Yeah, it's to you, you protect them, I guess, because uh, stuff could get in the top of the sleeve, right? It's like a vinyl record. Yeah. You, you, but you like, 
I also, the... like, as an example, I don't have a phone case. Well, that just makes you a reckless. No, it's meant to be used. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but do you use it out of your hand ever? Like, ah, uh. <laughs> drop it? Is that yeah, what you should is? meet? You should meet my wife. Oh my gosh! I there are people. Well, part of it, like, so I my wife. You have met her. I have met her indeed. My my wife has to have a phone case because she throws her phone in her purse. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Why is it? Can you tell me, please? Why <laughs> is it? I, I say this to Shannon every now and again. It's like, <laughs> why is it that everything that leaves your hand is with such velocity? <laughs> It's like the purse goes down hard, the, you yeah. throw the phone down, you throw the, the spatula down after you're cooking Yeah, or there's a lot of velocity. There's not like ever a set down. It's like, okay, we're done with this, and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, <laughs> the oomph that you had in there. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we've talked about it. I don't know how to Nobody knows why. solve it or change it or anything. No, there's kind of a, it's just a philosophical impossibility. All right, we're still fableless and legendary list. <laughs> Bryce says the only people I've heard say uh, it's meant to be used didn't take care of their vehicles. <laughs> My vehicle's in okay condition. <laughs> it's also very used. It's meant, <laughs> that thing was born to be used. I'm just, so part of it is like, that's a hard working. Apple, I'm sure, spends so much money to make this feel great. To yeah, hold. they don't care about what happens when you drop it. That is for sure. They don't. They just expect you to shell out the money to fix it. <laughs> Just don't drop it. Yeah, idiot. <laughs> I never thought about not dropping things. That's one way to do it. What are you doing over there? I'm, I'm sorting. You're sorting, right? So I'm sorting. I'm sorting. I feel like there are cards that I definitely know we need more of, but I don't know what they are. All the cards. Well, what we'll do is once we get done with this blitz for a while, we'll uh, let's unsleeve everything. And then do a full. I'll, I'll join you on a full sweep, and then we can. We you know, can you know what would be a good write down our full collection. Sweep What's is up? when set three is coming out. Mm -hmm. We break down all our decks, open set three, mm -hmm. sort it. This is all already sorted, and then we just rebuild decks based on the whole card pool. I like that. So we'll go are through you, this whole process again after the new set comes out. Are you into Are you into logging things, like four X time snap potion? 3x so that you can look at the list and literally say, I know that I own this. I feel like you are. <laughs> Knowing you and uh, given that you're asking the question, uh, let me ask you this. <laughs> do you think that's something I would ever do? <laughs> no, I don't think that's likely. But at least then we would know no, that I, like, oh, I need a blue plunder run. It must be in one of these decks that's built because I can see it's on the thing. So, And then you can stare at it at night when you can't sleep. It's interesting because I definitely like having my cards sorted, mm -hmm. but I would never have thought to take the time to write down how many, so you I can reference those. You don't want to chronicle, those. yeah, okay. It's not that I wouldn't appreciate or utilize such a system. It's just that, like, even earlier when I stacked all these armor pieces up for you, it's like they're now in order. So my goal would be to keep them in order permanently. Yeah, it's a lofty goal. Wherever they went. <laughs> With you around, it's hard to keep, keep sight of them. <laughs> uh, uh, Nathan says, uh, as many times I drop my phone, I'd have to have a second mortgage by now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I feel that. I feel that. You really think that you can keep all of these cards organized in, like, order, order? Can't even deal with Arkham. My Arkham stuff is sorted. No, it's not. <laughs> not for long. <laughs> well, when we're using it every week, it gets, and I'm not, when, it's, the problem. when it's more than one person using it, it becomes a nightmare, which is yeah. why a, ca a catalog is good. All right, I can build the catalog <laughs> if I have full reign to uh, disrupt the order. We, you can do whatever you want, <laughs> honestly. I'm just going to go through these newts and see. If we... <laughs> Get those newts. Man, oh man, I'm so close to understanding this game, I can feel it on the edge of my, my consciousness. It's like a net runner when you realize you're supposed to be running like early. ABR. Instead of I spent the first 20 turns trying to find my breakers, I finally found them and now the game's over. Yeah, that's an easy thing to do in that game. Yeah. I need a teacher. <laughs> you need a <laughs> sensei. Dude, once we do win it, we should we should we should definitely uh, do something that's like, all right. I think we understand the, the basics of this. Like a video? Ah, like maybe a video, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking more of like a live production. 
theater. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sounds fun. <laughs> Would crush on uh, Broadway. Do we, do we need to, to sort this? They're more or less in order. Or is that your wizard cards? These are the Rune Glade cards, and they are in the order as you like them. Yeah, good. So my, my dash cards are in order here currently. This is your Rune Blade cards. Where? Matthew, genius. I haven't been able to watch, can't stick around. Just wanted to check in to say that Flesh and Blood TCG, so FAB TCG equals Flesh and Blood Tuesday card game. Get it? I I'm understand there. that. Give me your armor from your Rune Blade guy. Oh, a little further. A little further. Uh, that step, that stack. Nope. This one. stuff? Yeah. Goliath, yeah. There it is. There he is. I'm just keeping it together. Okay. So the real thing is, like, these have to get integrated. Oh, my goodness. Can we build that storage solution already? This is driving me insane. Isn't it a white cardboard box? Well, that doesn't help us organize I would them. be more keen to put them in an organized state if it was nice to do it, rather than feeling like it was just putting it in an old storage box to be forgotten about. Well, let's do it. OK. You want to get out of here? Yeah, I guess I we just realized go. we're sitting here sorting. Yeah. My brain is gone. All right, we we're supposed to open one more pack each, mm. one of each set. What'd you get? Welcome to Wraith. Same. All right, we'll do one Arcane Rising as well. Let's see if this is the magic. This is the magic touch. The first pack was not. Oh, Evan, is that is that real? Card barrier box? Is that a real thing? We've been looking for a good storage solution. Everyone before. wants us to get an L and F. I don't know if it's ever going to happen. No, we send those along, man. We seem doomed to repeat our fate. you got to send those to the customers. I got nothing. But it was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> again, yet again, you're like, done. <laughs> Saver what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like the story of Warhammer Champions right here. Mm -hmm. Just going to take this one easy. It's like, oh, I'm going to buy everything. Well, we can't now. They're gone. Oh, man. Foil super rare. Red route. That is a warrior dream card right there. Absolute genius card. I wow. Feel, I feel very, yeah, I feel like we're going to be able to build some very respectable decks here. Particularly Dorinthia. <laughs> Dorinthia just keeps hitting. Yeah. It was destiny. Yeah, Evan, so I want, I'm looking for something luxury, you know what I mean? Like, not luxury, I'm looking to, I'm not looking to have my cards in a, you know, in a Ferrari or something, but... Um, you know, something that's nice, That's it's got, like, nice felt on the inside. Doesn't make you feel like you're a drug addict. Is that how you feel? Yeah. It's hilarious. <laughs> a arena's prayer. That's very important for the wizard matchup. Very important. Mm, I know that card. Blue take cover. I like that card a lot. It's a good card. It's a good card. Got a lot more plunder runs. Those are good. Here's I feel like we're getting a lot of those fundies cards. It's a foil uh, blue back alley. That back alley card is is terrifying. Yeah, Evan, so the archives are good, except I don't need to store a playmat, right? Like, I'm storing my cards. I'm not going to a tournament with my collection. So I'm looking for a four row, five row, eight row. 12 row. 20 row. We'll build a whole room for it. A, a room <laughs> row. Nathan says, how about the artist case from Hobby Lobby? It's broken token insert. So I, I, broken token inserts are fine. That, like, woodish material to me, I don't like that texture. <laughs> you know what I mean, though? I do. I mean, it feels like it's scratching. Yeah, we looked, at, we looked at making those a long time ago, and it just didn't feel I hate cards great. on wood. Like, like storage wood? Yeah. These, these tables are okay, but even then we play on play mats, Yeah. Right? I, if you have felt inside that box, I'd, yeah. I'd go there. Get some satin. Some satin? <laughs> Ryan mm. says, "I'm in. Where's the pre-order? I, I got one. Yeah, we need to. We need like. We need a lot. There's a lot of stuff like going that. on, and that's not exactly the the number one thing to I'm do. I'm telling you, I I swear to you, it was we would sell so many of those boxes. Well, you willing to sign on the dotted line? All hey, right, let's we're out of here, here everyone. It was a privilege. Stay safe. We'll be back tomorrow with Key Forge. Thursday, we're throwing back to ashes. Check that out." Friday is, of course, Arkham. It's been a privilege. 
check out the booster box subscriptions. The, that's gonna, that deadline's gonna be gone. The Scar for a Scar promo is not gonna be available elsewise, or not easily at least. I, I don't know exactly the You guys subscribe, who's not subscribed out there? Reveal yourselves, you can't watch anymore. <laughs> you gone, subscriber <laughs> only, just kidding. Uh, thanks for being here, stay safe, we'll catch you next time. Yeah, take care guys.